Here. Dingfelder? Here. Citro? Here. Miranda? Here. And Maniscalco? Here. Councilman Vieira is stuck in a little traffic and will be here any minute, but he will be joining us this evening. Councilman Goods will be absent. Um, I'm looking at the agenda here, and there's quite a few that cannot be heard, so we'll clear that up now. So we have would items you, would number. You, would you like to have staff to address you about that? They usually do. Okay. Yeah, if you'd like to, go ahead. Good evening, Council. Ryan Manassi, Planning, Design, and Development Coordination. Items number one, four, seven, eight, and ten are missed notices and cannot be heard, so you can remove them from your agenda. And item number 11, request a continuance to July. Could we take up the uh, removal of those All items right. from the agenda? First? May I have a motion to remove the Oh, I'm sorry, July items? 16th. July 16th. For the continuance. Second, Mr. Chairman. Wait. So we have a motion for removal of items 1, 4, 7, 8, and 10. That's right. first. That's a separate motion. That's so moved. That's a separate motion. That's Councilman Miranda with the motion. Second from Councilman Dinkfelder. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then the second Aye. motion that I need is item 11 for to be Chairman, continued. move item 11 to July 16th at 6 p.m. Second. We have a motion. May, I'm sorry, sir. Did you want to ask if there was anybody to talk as to the continuance? Is there anybody here to speak on item number 11? That item is being continued to July 16th. All right, seeing none, we have a motion from Councilman Miranda with a second from Councilman Citro. Correct? Yes, sir. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So we just, uh, we have half the agenda, which is fine. <laughs> All right, we go to item number two. Uh, oh, if we, we have to um, open open the public hearings if I can get a motion for that. Move, uh, open public hearing, move items two, three, five, six, nine, and 12. Second. We have a motion from Councilman Miranda, second from Councilman Citral in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, if you are to speak this evening on any item that is still on the agenda, please stand to be sworn in. Mr. Swire, affirm you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I may make inquiry of the clerk, please. Martin Shelby, City Council Attorney. Mr. Clerk, you had made reference to the fact that there were public comments that were available um, uh, relative to cases tonight. Those items were numbers. It was item two. There were some letters in support in the quasi box. And is, that right. the only, is that the only one that you're aware of? Only one I'm aware of, yes. Okay. Right. Can Move I get a motion? To, all right, we have a motion from Councilman Citra with a second from? Second. Second. We have a second from Councilman Carlson to receive and follow those documents. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that settles that. We can start on item number two. Sir, take it away. Item number two is application AB2-2009 for the, uh, mul there's a multitude of addresses, but I'll use the, the one that was input in Excel for 3615 West Cypress Street, also known as Midtown. Your staff report lists all the folios and uh, subsequent uh, addresses that are included in this petition. The current zoning is PD uh, through a plan development for um, files REZ18-09 and also Z94-9. Future land use is RMU-100. The property is zoned PD and contains two separate PD approvals. Uh, the area located on the southwest, southwest corner of the appro was approved in 1994. That was Z94-9, ordinance 94-209. The remaining area was approved in 2018, which is file REZ18-09, ordinance 2018-81. Um, that's the Midtown development, formerly uh, Tampa Bay 1. This project was approved as a mixed-use development with the allowable uses of residential, multifamily, and all commercial intensive uses. The maximum building height is 260 feet. The project will be developed in phases, with each phase evaluated for code compliance through the incremental site plan review process. All phases of the development must comply with the conditions of the approved PD site plan and the associated project design guidelines. The petition before you is requesting special use approval to include the overall project area as identified on the aerial map, which is attached to your staff report and I'll show you here shortly, um, to allow the sale of alcoholic beverages for a large venue, beer, wine, and liquor consumption on premises and package sales off premises consumption. The uh, proposed uses are restaurant, bar, lounge, retail sales, which are convenience goods as shopper's goods, hotel or motel, recreational facility, indoor and outdoor. Um, the proposed alcoholic beverage or AB sales area under this request consists of a total of 1,470,147 square feet or 33.75 acres with the following breakdown by AB sales area. Indoor is 580,560 uh, square feet, outdoors 530,597 square feet, and rooftop is 358,990 uh, square feet. The site plan uh, identifies outdoor areas along with the total of 14 structures 
areas that are within the project boundary. Although residential uh, is an allowable use, the AB sales requested does not include any residential areas. The AB sales area includes the first floor only with some rooftop sales area proposed. Uh, special events are proposed for some of the areas identified for rooftop AB sales, and the site plan submitted list AB sales hours as consistent with Chapter 14. Generally, the site is gen uh, located north of West Cypress Street, Cy I'm sorry, Cypress Street, south of the Interstate 275 and east of Northdale Mabry Highway and west of North Himes Avenue. The property is located in the West Shore Overlay District and the West Shore Business District. Um, the West Shore Business District, District requires a 250-foot distance separation from residential uses. The applicant is requesting the following three waivers. Uh, it's going to be a distance separation from residential uses, AB sales located within a parking or loading area or space, and to allow an unlimited number of special events per year. The site plan states uh, all permits issued after April 1st, 2011 shall be kept on site, and that will have a copy of the adopted ordinance with the associated site plan for the alcoholic beverage sales. Again, the three waivers listed in your staff report on page three come, two of them come from 27132. Again, first one, reduce the required distance separation from 250 feet to, from the residential uses to 83 feet. Um, the second being to allow the alcoholic beverage sales located within the parking or loading area or space for special events. And then the last is 27282.16a, which is to allow the unlimited number of events per year on the portion of the site designated as special event only AB sales area. The closest residential use is 3423 West Nassau Street and is zoned RS50, which is again 83 feet away. And as I stated previously, the property is in the West Shore Overlay District as well as the West Shore Tampa Business Center. Um, the property is along a mixed-use corridor village as well. Um, on page four of this uh, staff report, I would like to make one correction under the Planning, Design, and Development Coordination. The last bold item um, through talking with the agent we are and staff, we are removing the last bolded point. So the revisions that are stated in the staff report have been agreed between the agent and uh, staff, minus the, the inclusion of that last bolded um, item. What item, I'm sorry if I can, for the purpose of the record, what, is, what are you referring to? It's uh, the last bolded item on page four. It's in the alcoholic beverage note sections. We ask the following note number 10 be added. Staff is not gonna require that note be added. And then uh, further down on page four, section 2743 lists large venue definitions, which is a, an alcohol establishment more, with more than 299 person occupancy, and the beer, wine, and liquor, the consumption on premise and package sales off premise consumption definition. And also, if you uh, take mine to section, section 120, 27-129, uh, the general standards, and also section 27132, which is the regulations governing individual special uses and I'll show you some pictures in the area. So the top, hello. Mike. The top picture is the subject side itself uh, looking north and this would be on uh, the south side of the road. Um, it's obviously a large site so the aerial map will probably give you more justice of as to the area if you're in question of that. Um, I generally got some of the south neighbors to show you where the Midtown development is and then the neighbors to the south, which is mostly commercial on the south, the east neighbors, subject side itself again, which is the east side, and again, the site itself. Um, let me just go ahead and go to the site plan as well. This has been submitted to council for review. Um, as you can see, the Midtown development, uh, I-275, Northdale Mabry, Himes, and then Cypress. The other, the two PDs is one REZ18 that we were discussing is the main portion, and then this small portion here is the other Z94 file. And just for the aerial view, as you can see the zoning. So CI, CG, or I'm sorry, CI uh, surrounds the property with the interstate to the north. There is a mixture of CI, uh, CG and CI and some RS-50 over here on the east side. And again, the subject side is outlined in the red. TPD did, TPD did provide a report for your staff report and they had no objections to this request. Um, the development review and compliance staff did review the application and finds it inconsistent with the applicable City of Tampa development regulations. Should council approve uh, this petition tonight, there are minor corrections that are listed in this staff report minus the 
um, item number, uh, note number 10 that was identified um, between first and second reading. And staff is available for any questions. Thank you very much. Any questions from council? No? All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. I've got a question, Mr. Oh, Councilman Dinkfelder, go ahead. So, the, this large venue category, I'm trying to think of precedent. Uh, international Mall? Is I think the most recent that you'd recall, um, earlier this year you had um, the Yingling site north of Bush, as well as um, West Shore Marina. Those are both two large venues, same classification with the beer, wine, liquor consumption on-premise as well as package sales for off-premise consumption. Yeah. I was looking at the at the square footage. The total building square footage in the PD is a million eight, and the proposed AB square footage is almost a million five. Um, it's just sort of mind-boggling. It's just like you know three quarters of the entire uh, PD and it, project. It, speaks to wet zoning you're correct and I believe the agent will do good uh, uh, will be able to represent that side of it why they're requesting as much AB sales areas as they are um, in this is instance where we have these large venues like this we're using a drawdown system where there is a drawdown table where the uses are getting um, certain square feet from those tables for the AB sales All right. I'll enjoy hearing from mr. Bentley as always thank you mr. Chair. any other questions Anybody else? No, seeing none. All right. Thank you very much. Go ahead, sir. Am I allowed? To, good, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Can I take this off when I'm speaking? Yes, when you're speaking. We disinfect each lectern, so we ask that when people come up to speak, they use the alternate one. We disinfect one and switch back and forth. So the microphone, everything that you're touching, gets disinfected. Okay. So there's no Elmo up here, or there is. Right? You yes, can put it under there, and it'll project to the screens. If you move, if you move out of the way, it's right between those. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of council. My name is Mark Bentley, 401 East Jackson Street, Tampa, 33602. I represent the various ownership interests in the project known as Midtown. Midtown's about 22 acres, uh, and it's associated with the FDOT storage pond, which we've converted into, I guess, uh, an amenity or lake, so it's roughly 24 acres. Uh, it was approved for 1.8 million square feet of mixed use. It's commercial, office, residential, recreation, entertainment. Um, Consists of 11 buildings. The project substantially completed this time. The anticipated uh, completion date was hopefully the early 2021. Uh, trying to time it for the Super Bowl, if, if that should occur. But um, some of the tenants that have committed to this project, which is like a true urban design, all the outside hardscape actually is, John, to, to answer part of your question is considered an amenity for the project because of the urban design versus kind of a suburban design. So some of the tenants have signed up are REI Co-op, Burton's Grill and Bar, Joffrey's Ponte Restaurant, Aloft and Element Hotels, Crescent Concord Communities and Highwoods. They would be the residential developers in the project. <clears throat> the project's designs I mentioned urban style, utilizing the outside space to provide for significant activities and amenities, and <clears throat> there'll be significant outdoor activities with outdoor seating, which will enhance social distancing if this is what the future should require. Um, it was alluded to a similar project, uh, or a couple projects. Substantial, this project of the wet zoning is substantially similar to the two wet zones that were approved by council in the latter part of uh, 20. 19. One was for Yingling and the other one was for West Shore Marina. Uh, the, the common characteristics were that both were entirely private property and both were ur urban design. And all in those two uh, projects, all, by the way, received waivers to utilize the parking loading areas for the consumption and sales of alcohol, along with receiving waivers to residential property. I think with West Shore it was 250 to 100 excuse me, zero in West and Yingling was 250 to 100 to residential property. 
We agree with the staff conclusions in the report and to, to make the changes as requested by staff. <clears throat> to answer your question, Mr. Dingfelder, is what we've done here is to maintain flexibility with this 22-acre, you know, pretty significant project, is we've identified certain buildings and particular uses that are consistent with the PD zoning plan that would say allow for retail, office, hotel, restaurant, and then we've associated with that certain amount of square footage that could be wet zone. So you might have a hotel, for example, that all floors are wet zone. Under the city's wet zoning law, anywhere where you sail, where there's a sale or consumption of alcohol has to be wet zone. So those numbers are kind of um, increased or escalated by virtue of the fact that are multi-story buildings. Okay. And also, um, with respect to some of the Parking structures or rooftops, what we've done here, and it's one of the conditions is that we could use those for functions. For example, the main parking garage, which I'll show you, or you might be familiar with, it's the main garage right off 275. The client was proposing to have a Super Bowl party, you know, in conjunction with that. So what we've done on a couple of these rooftops is allow for a temporary special use permit, which you'd have to acquire administratively. It wouldn't just be as of right. You'd have to go down through Ryan's agency and they would analyze the permit to ensure there's sufficient parking, solid waste, and things like that. So it's just kind of a temporary situation. But, but those numbers are added into this number, which kind of, I guess you could say, skew, skews the number, makes it look significant. Um, like I mentioned, the other two projects, they were wet zone in there entirely, both Yingling and West Shore Marina. It's the same concept. And what we're trying to, to accomplish here is that, um, well, first of all, each tenant's gonna come in and uh, obtain their own uh, license from the Division of Alcohol, which will impose certain conditions and stipulations on the issuance of that license. But we wanted to have this, since everything's private, the roadways, and sidewalks, and things like that, where you could actually go to a venue, say with your wife or family, and you could get a drink, and you could walk over to the lake. It's all private property. So there's no consumption of public rights away. And one reason we had to do this too is wet zone some of these common areas is because the property's private, unlike the rest of Tampa, um, you, you be, the opportunity to get a, a sidewalk cafe permit would be available. Say you have a piece of property downtown here and you want to have outside seating, okay, or dining, mm -hmm. you go to the city administratively to obtain a permit, an annual permit for sidewalk cafe. To the contrary, this property being private, we don't have the ability to do that. Therefore, we're put in this position where we wet zone those exterior areas and the common area, the courtyard, so to speak. Um, staff has rendered a finding of compatibility on page six of its report regarding control of potentially adverse effects, stating that, quote, potential adverse impacts are greatly reduced slash eliminated given the project location Project design includes buffering, screening, and landscaping of all proposed uses, which would provide increased protection for the residential uses to the east. And here again, when, the pro when this council approved the project in 2018 in July, it also made that same finding that based on the um, buffering and screening and setbacks that the PD provided, that would ensure compatibility with the surrounding area. We have received two letters of support, and I'm not, I'm not sure if they made it into the record or not, but uh, I know we sent them to your office, one from the South Tampa Chamber and one from the West Shore Alliance. And what I was gonna do now, just take a second. Um, this is a rendering of Midtown looking from Dale Mabry to the east toward downtown. And what you can see here is here the stormwater pond we converted to a lake actually dredged that and done plantings and there's going to be a, a running path around the lake. Here's the REI building and office tower. Here's the Whole Foods and behind Whole Foods is residential. Here's more residential where I'm pointing. And then there's a main courtyard here where they anticipate having special events like Christmas, holiday, things like that. Then you've got an office tower and you've got another office tower over on the northwest corner of Himes and Cyprus. Here's how we started after we raised everything. 
The only thing you can see still standing <clears throat> was the men's warehouse, which uh, we relocated across the street. So, and these are just some pictures as progress is being made. And here's ultimately what the project's gonna look like at the conclusion, looking toward downtown. And these are the materials. Ashley, did the council get those? Yes. Okay. We have them in our folders right here. Okay. And each council member has them. Okay. So here's the Midtown when you're looking <clears throat> from Dale Mabry to the southeast. And in that building will be REI on the bottom floor. And here's a view to, toward the north. And you can see on the east side of Himes, it's primarily commercial properties. There's a couple scattered residential toward the north. And in terms of uh, the distance waiver, I can get into that, but I think we're requesting to go from 250 to 83 feet for one property that's zoned residential 50. <clears throat> it, that property abuts commercial, like most of the properties there. And notably, that whole corridor on the comp plan is not residential. It's actually CC35, which doesn't prohibit residential 50, but it strongly discourages residential 50. So in essence, one way to characterize it is being a legal non-conforming use. So it's, I mean, realistically, it's going to change sometime in the future. And here's the central plaza where a lot of activities would take place. So if you were in a restaurant, for example, and you had a beer or whatever, and you wanted to go sit in the courtyard here and listen to entertainment, you could do that. Um, if you've ever been up to the villages, like it or not, they have a couple like city, uh, downtown. It's, it's kind of a similar concept there. Um, it's not as rowdy, we don't think, but um, anyhow. Here's another view of the central plaza. And here's a view looking toward downtown of the lake and with all the vegetation. And the DOTs authorize us to irrigate it and put sprinklers in the lake as well. And finally, here's a view looking to the north toward 275. <clears throat> and you can see the Element Hotel, the Aloft Hotel, and then Himes would be located to the right where I'm pointing. Just to go over that waiver issue one more time is that this property here is 83 feet away. Um, we kind of get contradicting information from the city that the, the width of the right of way is 89 feet or 83 feet or whatever, but um, in any event, our surveyor said 83 feet. And you can see that property is zoned resident, residential 50. The property to the south is commercial. All these properties here, and I'll show you, you see the purple here, they're all CC35 on the comp plan. And any of these other residential properties here that have been identified with being within, being within 250 feet, they're all screened by an additional commercial structure. So you'd have the 83 or 85 foot Himes Avenue, you have a 20 foot setback for our building, then you have these commercial buildings here buffering these other residential properties that are in fact CC35 either in, to in total or in part on the city's comp plan. And here's the matrix I alluded to that's found in your zoning code, which says R is 50 in the CC 35. It says it's consistent with the land use plan category, however, rezoning to R is 50 and CC 35 are discouraged. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, that said, I, I think it's, in, in sum, it's um, really a great way to approach something like this instead of us coming in with 55 wet zoning applications, you know, and driving the staff crazy and trying to monitor this thing over time. And I think these other two projects you approved a couple of years or last year really paved the way in how to approach this. And we've been working diligently with not only Ryan, but the uh, city attorney's office, especially Kate, working on this. And so we think it's a really reasonable approach and we'd appreciate your uh, approval this evening, thanks. Thank you very much. Any comment from council members? If I may. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Bentley. Yes, sir. Uh, 
this is a massive amount of, of square footage, over a million square foot for wet zoning. And, but I applaud this, this, this uh, development for a uh, parcel that has been undeveloped or tried to be developed so many, many times over the time that I've lived here since 1974. Uh, I see two very impressive letters, one from West Shore Alliance and one from South Tampa Chamber. Usually when, when something like this happens, I ask the petitioners, did you go to the surrounding neighborhoods and ask how they feel about it? Uh, what is the closest neighborhood association? Oakford Park to the south, and then no, you have McFarland uh, Park. Association. Oakford Park is okay. one, and McFarland Park is the one right McFarland next to it. McFarland Park, did, did, you, did you go to them? and ask them, or how about the uh, West Tampa Chamber of Commerce? Did you go to, to any of those organizations? No, but I, I've spoke with West Tampa, okay, and I don't have anything on the record, but they said they supported the petition, and with the pandemic and everything, I was trying to track uh, some people down. Quite honestly, I noticed that you were on it maybe before council, and I was trying to get some information as to who I would contact. But I'll represent as, as a lawyer here when I spoke to the uh, president and this is a few months ago, he said they were in support and they would do anything they can. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't connect with them. With respect to the civic associations, I didn't contact them above and beyond the requirements that we post the property and send them notice. But I'll tell you this, when we rezoned the property, they came out, they being the, the, the neighborhood located directly east, on the east side of Himes, many people came out in support of the project at that point in time when we rezoned the property. So this is really kind of just the icing on the cake. You know, the uses are there, and now we're just allowing the sale of alcohol. Did you get any type of uh, letters of rejection against it? No, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody in the public wish to speak on this item? All right, seeing none, uh, go ahead, Councilman Dingfelder. Um, again, um, Mark, the when I, when I, I wasn't here to vote on this uh, PD project, so that's neither here nor there. But what I heard about the project uh, from the developers was this is going to be a great mixed-use project, which it looks like it will be. Um, it's going to have a huge amount of office and residential and hotel, as well as uh, you know restaurants and commercial. Pretty much every aspect of mixed use. That's good too. So, but when I saw these numbers, I'm thinking, and then you just showed it again. I don't, I don't really understand it. Are you gonna have wet zoning in the apartment building? No, no, it's you're actually. Gonna, you're gonna have wet zoning in the office building? So that, that's, no, where here, I, that's, here, that's where I'm confused about. Here's what we did is some of these, we identified certain uses for certain buildings like let's say it could be a restaurant or retail, okay, our office. And so what we would do, okay, just a second, I'll let you come up. So what we would do is we identify a building, for example, I'm pointing at, this is called the Northeast Office Tower. And at the bottom of the tower, we anticipate having a bar or restaurant, okay? So there's square footage associated with that. Then we have two hotels, multi-level hotels. So we, we wet zoned every floor. And then we wet zoned the exterior common areas. So here again, it's private property that you can actually take alcohol you know, from an establishment and walk to one of the amenities if you wanted to. So, um, there's some flexibility in all of these buildings here in terms of uses, and there's a schedule associated with that it's t that we're bound by. You know, it might just be a certain building. You can't exceed 20,000 square feet, but you could do a bar or a restaurant, or, you know, whatever, or, or, or both if you wanted to. But um, that's it. And then there's square footage associated with these parking, parking decks here. So... So, so for example, in the, in a which which one of those is a you know condo or, or apartment? Okay, yeah, I was I'm sorry I overlooked that. Ryan had mentioned during the course of his presentation, 
he said no residential will be wet zoned. Now our two residential developers are pretty sophisticated and they actually signed this application and if anybody would be affected by the sale of alcohol and be these two investors, our owners in, this, in the middle of this property, which is Concord and um, Highwoods, two very sophisticated developers. So they're on board with this and their developments are here and here roughly. So on the bottom floor, for example, of the residential, we anticipate a bar or a restaurant, ice cream shop, whatever retail, something like that, okay? So those areas are wet zones, say on the first floor where I'm pointing, Councilman Dingfelder, but not anything above and beyond that. And we don't know for a fact exactly what's gonna go over in there, and over time, obviously, things are gonna transition. You know, so um, this is really the most realistic approach to handling this thing. So Mr. Bentley and Mr. Carnegie, the, this, I mean, I'm not saying which way I'm gonna go on this, but it's just, it's, in terms of these total square footages, which Mr. Citro pointed out, it's really, it's kind of overkill. I mean, at the end of the day, you said you might have a package store on the first floor, but therefore you've, you've, you're wet zoning that entire six floors or no, whatever. We're, no, we're not. No, you, you misunderstood. And if you look at actually the site plan, it'll say first floor only, or, or first floor and rooftop. So, so the total number at the back of 1.470 yeah, but here's, is not accurate? No, it's accurate, but here's, I'm, I'm here's not. the situation is we wet zone, say for example, this is Whole Foods, we wet zone the parking lot, okay? Now we're not gonna have a bar or restaurant in the parking lot, but occasionally there might be a special event. So we factored that in. These two main roadways here, if I had to do this again, they're included. If we had a block party, for example, okay? But that obviously consumes up significant, a significant amount of square footage. So you have not just the buildings, Councilman, but you have all these common areas here because, like I said, under the city's law, you know, it's where you not only sell, but it's where you consume as well. So if I'm buying a drink at this restaurant here, and you know, I want to walk over to the the lake over here and sit on a bench, you know, have a, have okay. a drink, we had to wet zone that area too. So in terms of the actual buildings, it's really not that significant. Um, Adam, I don't know if you, he's good. All right, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Any other comments? Was there anybody in the public that wished to speak on this item? So I was here for the vote on the rezoning, which was a massive rezoning, and you know, the controversy was there with the you know, with some neighborhood folks, um, but it did pass, and this is a project, you know, and I hate to use the term live, work, play, because it's so overused, but uh, it is, it's a, it's a city within itself. And I remember in the original plans that we're gonna have a movie theater and some other things, and I know it's, and it's changed up, but you have your grocery store, you have your restaurants, you have your office, business use, and you have your residence. And there's people that are gonna move into an area like this where they're centrally located, uh, and they can live and work and really not even need a car because they have everything right there. And the airport is right down the road and the interstate is there and all this stuff. You know, I'm excited, it's in my district. Um, I've heard really nothing but positive things regarding this uh, Midtown project. Um, of course, there's always the issue with traffic. I know Cypress is being widened there. Um, and then Himes, there may have maybe more traffic lights going in. I, you know, I know they've resurfaced it and they've been doing work and what's, what not. So. I'm happy to support this. Um, see, Councilman Miranda. Thank you, Chairman. You know, when you look at a, this development, it's something that now is replacing the malls, per se, even though it's not a mall. Because from what I read and from what I've seen on television and other news outlets, 25 to 30 percent of the malls that we know today will not be here in 2021 at the end of 2021 it's a sad thing but that's how it is but you know what malls replace the two areas of shopping that we had in the city during the heydays of the 50s and 60s which was ebor city and downtown and two malls opened up britain plaza and uh, the one in on florida and waters i think Orland. it was called northgate. northgate and what happened there 
what happened? Both of those malls have declined. Now they're both coming back up and really are doing well because times have changed again. So what I see here, the individuals who own this uh, did an outstanding job in thinking of the future because you don't know today if it's gonna be an apartment and tomorrow's gonna be a hotel. Times are changing and they're changing very quickly in the, in the business world that you have to make a very substantial investment. When I see something like this, I'm not against the alcohol zoning because somehow, somewhere, and, and hopefully you can control it because sometimes they come in with no idea to have a drink, that's fine. But what I'm trying to say is that things change. I remember 20 years ago, what was in that building and that whole 22 acres? There was a, if I recall now, and Tampa Electric transmission line operation. There was a- Monero's? Uh, yeah. There was a, L a catering Lorello's by the family. Lorello's, yeah. There, there were Lorello's. Mm -hmm. they, but at the end, for 20 years after all that left, there was one building. I thought it was called Progressive or something like that. Yeah. And that was it for 20 years. So that land is never gonna stay still for another 20 years. So look what's happened now. So what you're doing is thinking progressively so that you don't have to come back again because you said it, it ain't gonna be alcohol on the first floor or in the rooftop zone now. But in the future, if that changes, you exactly know why he's gotta have it. So that it does, is not included in your million some feet. There are areas in the whole state, in the whole country that are big as this or bigger, that are all alcohol. That doesn't mean you have to buy a drink. That doesn't have to mean anything. But people now want the new life, the new experience. Something new will gather everybody. And this is new, it's gonna have a large, large contingency of people going there. What concerns me to a little bit is how's the traffic gonna move on Cypress and Times and Del Mabry without the alcohol? Maybe they see better with the alcohol, I don't know. But what I'm trying to say is it's there, it's for a reason, and it's gonna rejuvenate an area that's been still for many, many years. In fact, more likely the opposing mall, not opposing to you, but the mall a mile or so away from you, will also going to change very shortly because it has to. It has to redirect itself and reinvent itself in order to stay in business. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Since you mentioned L Lorello's restaurant, a little fun trivia question, which well-known Tampa person had his own table at that restaurant? Uh, Charlie Miranda? No. <laughs> Jim Walter, who across the street had the, the Jim Walter they, building there. What they sold at Lorello's besides pasta? Yeah, what? No, no I don't know. The, the lingerie? I, I'm an innocent man, sir. I don't, I don't, I don't know this. Charlie knows what I'm talking about. I don't Me? Know right, any other comments or questions? I was from, too uh, old then. Any other comments or questions Chair, from council members? Mr. Chair, if we're going down memory lane, I think that was the resting place of Ayers Diner. It went from Kennedy, excuse me, oh, Dale yeah. Mabry. Yeah. Went to there and then it went went away. So I had lunch at that diner at Cypress and Himes once and then they moved it. But yeah, he's right. Yeah. See, I'm not that young. i you know, I it, saw things before they got demolished. And and, and Mr. Sutra, I'll give a shout out to my wife because one of our first dates was at the Ayers Diner right there on that corner. There you go. And they're still together and happy today. Twenty four years of bliss. Can I get a motion to close? So moved. Second. Motion from Councilman Miranda with a second from Councilman Citra. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Councilman Miranda, would you like to take item number two? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number two, file number AB2-2009. Now, however, I want to incorporate what uh, Mr. Manassi said about the second page because I wasn't attended Yes, too much. please. Thank you, Mr. Miranda. Thank you. Uh, this ordinance being presented for first reading consideration. Ordinance approving a special use permit, SU2, for alcohol beverage sales, laws venue consumption on premise, and package sales off premise consumption, and making lawful the sale of beverage regardless of alcohol content, beer, wine, and liquor, at or from that certain lot, plot, or track of land located at 3613, 3615, 3623 West Cypress Street. 3609 and 3514 West Arch Street, 1002 North Himes Avenue, 1201 
North Clearview Avenue, 3611 and 3605 West Nassau Street, 3508, 3510, 3512, 3518, 3701, 3720, and 3725 Gray Street, and 1001 and 1101 North Del Mabry Highway, also known as Midtown Tampa, more particularly described in Section 2 from providing that all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict are repealed, providing an effective date, along with Mr. Brian Manassi's statements that he would put into the record. All right. Do we have a second? Second. Second, second from Councilman Citro and Councilman Dingfelder. You had a question or comment? Yeah, just, just a comment. I'm, I'm going to support this today on first reading. Um, with a little hesitation, I don't, I don't, I don't really care for this sort of blanket, peanut, you know, peanut butter approach um, to spread across an entire property. I think, I think we could have been a little more concise and a little more limiting. Um, and my only other concern is, and that's why I'm going to throw the caveat. I'll support it on first reading. My only other concern is when I look at participating organizations on the front page of the staff report. It says Oakford Park was notified, West Shore Alliance was notified, North Bonaire was notified. And Mr. Bentley, I know you notified everybody who you had to notify. But when we were on the campaign trail last year, the um, West Tampa uh, Civic Association, which is very active, when we went over there, there were a lot of comments and concerns about Midtown. And they're not on this list of neighborhood associations. Again, I'm not faulting you, Mr. Bentley. You notified everybody you legally had to. Um, so with that said, I'll support it. Thank you very much. So we have a motion from Councilman Miranda with a second from Councilman Citra. All those in, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carried with Goods being absent. Second reading and adoption will be on July 16th at 9.30 a.m. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you we'll very see much you, for your time. We'll see you Have then. Good thank evening, you. Guys. Take care. Thank you. All right, item number three. Um, item number three, Mary Samaniego, Planning, Design, and Development Coordination. Item number three is SU2-2004. It's for a special use two for bank with drive-in window for property located at 5002 East Fowler Avenue. Jennifer Malone with your Planning Commission staff. This is in the University Planning District. If I put it on the Elmo, it'll show up, right? Okay. Oops, you can see my notes. Uh, this is the subject site outlined here. We're on East Fowler Avenue. We have University. Oh, can you Florida. pick up the microphone or <coughs> speak closer to it? Yeah, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, so we're on East Fowler Avenue. We're in the University Planning District. This is the University of South Florida, Mosey to the south. Um, this is near the jurisdictional boundary. Excuse me a second, please. May, may I ask the petitioner to come back? I, uh, I want to put in the record as soon as she finishes, if I we ask for reopening and put the conditions and the waivers provision in there so that we have a clean record. I just do it for the safety of, of all. Mr. Bentley. Uh, Mr. Bentley, yeah. Move to reopen, Harry. <laughs> we uh, motion from Councilman Citra to reopen item number two. Second. Second from Councilman Miranda. Sorry about that. Yeah, I just want to put something to the record so the record is cleared and uh, compliance and general standard, the, the use will ensure that public health, safety, and welfare is held, is located where proposed and development and operated accordingly to the plan as submitted. The use of, uh, is compatible and contiguous with surrounding property. The use will not uh, establish or present or encourage more intensive or compatible, incompatible use in the area. The waivers to include uh, reduce the required 250 feet separation from residential to 83 feet to allow alcohol beverage sales to be located within a parking lot, loading area, space, or, or special event, to allow for an unlimited numbers of events per year on a portion of the site designated as special events only ABC, AB sales area. And I apologize for doing that. I just forgot to put that in the record. No, I appreciate you doing it. Thanks. We have a motion from Councilman Miranda with a second, second. from Councilman Vieira. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Any opposed? No. Seeing and, and the hearing and the hearing was reopened for that. Yes, purpose? sir. We did. We okay. had the motion for it. Okay. So you're adding that condition to the part of the motion. I guess the record can reflect that those that addition is an amendment to his motion. Correct. There will be an amendment to the first reading motion, and again, second reading and adoption will be on July 16th at 9:30 a.m. 
Okay. All do, right. you need, do you need another motion to close, Mr. Uh, Clerk? Are you okay? Uh, yes. Yeah, since Can I get a motion to close this again? M move to close. Second. A motion to close from Councilman Miranda, second from Councilman Citra. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now we go to item number three. Hey, thanks again. Sure. Jennifer from with your Planning Commission staff. Item number three, like I was saying earlier, we're over by University of South Florida, right off of East Fowler Avenue. This is also close to the jurisdictional boundary between the city of Tampa and unincorporated Hillsborough County, so everything to the north is, is in unincorporated Hillsborough County. Um, the designated future land use of the subject site is Community Mixed Use 35, that's that pink color. The blue is the public, that's the University of South Florida, and a portion of the Mosey Museum to the south, and again, everything to the north is actually within unincorporated Hillsborough County. Uh, we did find this consistent with the comprehensive plan. We found that the um, starting development pattern is predominantly commercial in character, but the applicant provided a pedestrian entrance and some bike racks to further our mi mixed use policies within the plan, um, and especially since Fowler Avenue is a designated transit emphasis corridor. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up. Mary Samaniego again, Planning and Design and Development Coordination. Um, the applicant is asking for the property at 5002 East Fowler Avenue. Again, this is a special use too for the drive-in associated with the bank. Uh, the property is currently zoned commercial general. As Jennifer stated, <clears throat> excuse me, it's on the um, northeast corner of Fowler Avenue and North 50th Street. Um, the site is approximately 1.38 acres and is currently occupied by a restaurant. Um, thus, that restaurant will be demolished. <clears throat> And a 5,000 um, plus or minus square foot building will be constructed with six drive through lanes. So the special use again that you're approving is for the drive through lanes. Um, surrounding uses are an apartment complex in Hillsborough County, retail uses, University of South Florida and Mosey is catty corner to the south, uh, west of the site. Um, the proposed use requires 21 parking spaces and a total of 31 are being provided. And um, other than that, there are some minor modifications between first and second reading for planning, design, and development coordination. Natural resources found it consistent with some corrections to the tree table and some um, uh, various notes that need to be added and removal of waivers. And there are no other changes between first and second reading, and there are no waivers associated with this application. Saying that, the development review compliance staff has reviewed this application and found it consistent with the City of Tampa Land Development Code. Do you have any questions for me at this time? Thank you very much. Are there any questions from any council members? Seeing none, thank yeah. you very much. Is the applicant here? Yeah. Yes, sir. Is the uh, microphone on? There we go. How about that? Yes, sir. Better. All right. Steve Boggs, Boggs Engineering, 607 South Alexander Street, Plant City, Florida. Huh? Uh, if you can put the microphone directly, it's, we still can't hear you too well. How about now? There we go. Thank you very all much. Right. When you go through everything else I said before, we all still said. You said Steve Boggs? Boggs. Boggs Engineering, 607 right. South Alexander Street, Plant City, Florida. I have been sworn in and I am the agent for Mid Florida Credit Union. All right. Um, as was stated, we are trying to put a bank at the northeast corner uh, where the <laughs> existing Perkins restaurant now exists. Uh, we would like to uh, uh, remove that, put this bank in. It does have five drive throughs with a uh, bypass lane, not six, as shown on the plan. Um, and uh, we stand in, uh, in agreement with uh, staff recommendations. I can answer any questions you may have. All right, do we have any questions from any council members? Just I, Councilman Mr. Citro. Mr. Chair, just out of curiosity, and with, with, with modern day banking, and I'm, I'm not a banker, however, you can cash and deposit checks using your phone, and more and more banks are going to closing drive-through. Why five drive-through uh, lanes, if I may ask you? My representative's here from the bank. If you'd like him to answer that, I can let him do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you I, very I, much. I'm just curious. I was curious of the same thing, Mr. Sutra. 
Councilman Dingsfelder. No, no. no? Hi right. there. I'm Chris Robertson, uh, 129 South Kentucky Avenue is the headquarters for Mid-Florida Credit Union. Uh, to answer your question, sir, uh, we still do face-to-face -face banking. We still find that as a, a driver for our locations. Um, also, with the drive throughs we do have unique hours to cater to multiple facet workers, um, 7 to 7, Monday through Friday. So to have this amount of lanes is what we require just to help with the flow of traffic and the amount of uh, transactions that we go through, you know, from branch to branch across the multiple counties that we have. And again, just, just asking, is this the only branch within a certain range? Well, we're trying to fill in for the Tampa area as far as branches. So yes, we do. I think the next closest one is actually in New Tampa. Then we have one in Clearwood, I mean, uh, uh, Carrollwood. Uh, we do have one on Waters Avenue. So it is a fill-in branch, but yes, it does. We'll meet our um, demographics of number of members that are in the area, plus then all the future um, to partner with uh, the College of USF. So we feel that you know it's going to have the volume that similar to our other branches. Thank you for answer, uh, asking my answering my questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anybody else? No, seeing none. All right. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak on this item, item number three? Move to close. We have a motion second. to close from Councilman Miranda with a second from Councilmember Citro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Councilman Citro, would you mind taking yes, item number three? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Three? Chair. Uh, file number SU2-20-4. Um, I move for an ordinance being presented reading, first reading consideration, an ordinance approving a special use permit SU2, approving a bank with drive-in, a CG commercial general zoning district in the general vicinity of 5002 East Fowler Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in section one there, providing an effective date. The petitioner has met the burden of proof. It is com compliance with applicable land use and policies and is with the, within the general standards of chapter 27-129. I apologize, Ms. San Diego, are you asking for uh, site plan modifications between first and second reading? Yes, sir, I am. Thank you very much. With site plan modifications between first and second reading. Do we have a second to the motion? Second. Second from Council Member Miranda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carried with goods being absent. Second reading and adoption will be on July 16th at 9.30 a.m. And, and Mr. Boggs, I, I had to go with you because my daddy was born in Plant City in 1929, so you know, you can't be all bad. Good place to go at. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. We move on to item number five, which is another bank. Yes, it is, sir. Item number five is Mary San Diego. It's SU2 2006. It's a bank with drive-in window. Now we're at 2792 East Fowler Avenue. Jennifer Malone with your Planning Commission staff. We're in the university area again, um, but this time we're over uh, just south of the University Square Mall, which is located to the north of the subject site. We're still on East Fowler Avenue. The adopted future land use of the site is Community Commercial 35. That's in the red color. Um, to the north, this is white because it is in unincorporated Hillsborough County. Um, East Fowler Avenue is a designated transit emphasis corridor as well. Um, it is not within an evacuation zone. And as you know, the East Fowler Avenue is primarily commercial in character. Uh, we did find that this is consistent with the surrounding development pattern. Um, there's a range of commercial uses along this area, uh, and the applicant is providing a pedestrian connection, landscaping, and a bike rack for, on the subject site, which is furthering those mixed-use corridor policies in the comprehensive plan. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mary San Diego again from Planning Design and Development Coordination. Now we're at 2792 East Fowler Avenue for another bank with a drive-in window, special use two. Um, again, this is a CG zoning district. So within that zoning district, a drive-in associated with the bank requires a special use criteria review, which are found in your staff report. Um, the site is currently, um, the entire site is just south of 
is just south of uh, University Square Mall. And this line right here that I'm indicating with my finger is the jurisdictional line between Tampa and Hillsborough County. So only this area of the property are within your zoning authority. So this is the area that's the subject of the special use to site plan, that area being 0.57 acres. The applicant is requesting a bank with two drive-through windows, uh, 5,000 square feet. Um, they have direct access through a shared access easement here onto Fowler with the associated other retail uses in that larger development. Um, because this property is kind of split with Hillsborough County, the site plan was sent over to the Hillsborough County um, Zoning Growth Management Department and they reviewed it as part of a DRC ad hoc review and they found no zoning issues. Saying that um, there are just uh, four minor changes between first and second reading for planning, design, and development coordination. All the other departments had no changes and no issues. So the development review and compliance staff has found this consistent with the city of Tampa land development code. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Seeing none. All right, applicant. Good evening, uh, Matthew Campo, Campo Engineering, representing the applicant. Um, the site uh, actually originally was zoned with special use for Zoe's Kitchen. So this kitchen was bought out for the project. They've come back with this bank use. Um, this has two drive-throughs, and it's actually probably going to be an ATM-based, ATM screen interactive type system versus window. Um, but nonetheless, we're being approved for two drive-throughs. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm detail. sorry. I'm available for questions. Okay. All right. Are there any questions for the applicant? Seeing none. All right. Thank you very much. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to speak on this item, which is item number five? Move to close. We have a motion to close from Councilman Miranda with a second from Councilman Citro. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Councilman Carlson, would you like to take this item? Sure. <clears throat> I'd like to move file number SU220-06, uh, uh, ordinance being presented for. Please speak into the uh, microphone. Is it not working? It's, it's not loud yeah. at all. Hello? Yeah, really. There we go. Um, Ordinance being presented for first reading consideration ordinance approving special use permit SU2, approving a bank with drive-in in a CG commercial general zoning district in the general vicinity of 2792 East Fowler Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, and as more particularly described in section one, hereof providing an effective date. And uh, there are direct revisions. Yes. I, <clears throat> and direct revisions shown in the revision sheet uh, be made as the applicant has met its burden of proof to provide competent substantial evidence that the special use allowing drive-in window lanes associated with bank facility as condition and shown on the site plan is consistent with the comprehensive plan and city code. And I adopt the findings and reasoning of the planning commission and city staff reports. Um, in particular, um, the proposed use is consistent with the um, CC35 land use designation, which allows general and intensive commercial retail service professional office and residential uses. And the development pattern of, on this portion of Fowler Avenue is predominantly commercial in character there are strip commercial shopping centers and individual retail and restaurant uses to the west and east University Square Mall to the north and a commercial strip mall to the south. The proposed use is comparable and compatible with the surrounding development pattern consistent with land use policy 8.2.1. Second. Thank you very much. We have a motion from Councilman Carlson with a second from Councilman Miranda. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you very much. The motion carried with foods being absent. Second reading <laughs> will be on July 16th at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. All right, item number six. Mary Samaniego, Planning, Design, and Development Coordination. Item number six is REZ 2020. It's a rezoning for the property at 3335 North 22nd Street from RM24 to CG. Jennifer Malone with your Planning Commission staff. We're in the Central Tampa Planning District in the East Tampa Urban Village specifically. It is not within an evacuation zone. Can I zoom in on this? No, okay, sorry. Um, this is the subject site here outlined in the purple. This is North 22nd Street. I have a, a multifamily apartment uh, housing complex across the street, some scattered commercial and housing along this corridor. <coughs> The adopted future land use is community mixed use 35. 
that is the pink color that allows the commercial general uses. To the north is community commercial 35 in the red. Um, that allows up to commercial intensive uses. We have residential 20 here, residential 35, and then this is uh, recreational open space representing Reagan Park to the north. We did find this consistent with the comprehensive plan. Urban villages promote um, a livable environment with a mixture of uses and having a commercial general zoning district within the East Tampa, East Tampa urban village would support that designation in the comprehensive plan and it is consistent with the underlying future land use category. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up. Sorry. Mary Samaniego again. Um, the property um, in question on North 22nd Street is requesting a rezone from Arm 24 multifamily to commercial general to allow all commercial general uses. I've provided a list of all the permitted uses or considered entitlements within that commercial general zoning district in your staff report for your review. The property is 0.56 acres. Um, it is located at the southeast corner of North 50, uh, 22nd Street and East 26th Avenue. Um, the property currently has minor uh, vehicle repair use. The surrounding properties zonings are RM16. Can't zoom in on this, but you can see the RM24. There's CI zoning to the north and commercial general zoning, which the applicant is requesting further to the south. Here's the Belmont Heights development. Um, as you can see, up and down 22nd Street is already an established pattern of commercial zoning. Um, this is a Euclidean rezoning, so no waivers are being requested. And the planning, um, I'm sorry, the development review compliance staff has found this consistent with the City of Tampa Code of Ordinances. Thank you, you very much. Questions? Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you. Applicant for item number six. Good evening, Councilman. Uh, my name is Chiranjeevi Janu. I live at 3335 North 22nd uh, Street, uh, Tampa, Florida. And this is my first time, so if I make any mistakes, please excuse me. And we applied for a permit uh, for a rezoning from uh, um, RZ24 to uh, Commercial General. I'm a pharmacist, director of pharmacy. Uh, we have pharmacies here in Florida. We have one pharmacy, which is uh, two blocks from the location where it is right now. And we are renting the space where we are having issues uh, with parking. So we, saw, we thought this place would be ideal because we service a lot of clients from Lee Davis, which is right across the street from uh, the property that we are uh, requesting for uh, rezoning. And uh, most of the clients in the Belmont Heights area use us as a pharmacy. So I think it will be a good use uh, for the building. Thank you very much. Yes. Sir. Are there any questions with from this, council oh, members? Council member Vieira. This was your first time speaking? At, uh, at City Council. Well, at you, the City Council. Yes. You hit it out of the park. <laughs> Thank Did you. Work. Thank you. Uh, yes, ma'am. All right. Anybody else? No? No? All right. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to speak on item number six? Yes, ma'am. Please approach that lectern. We disinfect that, so the other one's already sanitized. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. All right. Let me just put this up. All right. Can you see this all right? Yes, we can. I, uh, this gentleman's uh, facility that they currently have now is on the opposite corner. I sit in the middle of that block. He's to the south of me, the catacordic, uh, that very <laughs> corner where they are now currently. And also there is a barbershop that's on the side of that building as well. So they have two things going on besides the pharmacy and the, um, what's being developed there. Now they have since started developing that block. We have two homes that have been built by demand, demand you know. Dem domain. Domain home, sorry. And one to the rear of me, which is a two story. My concern or what I would like to see happen is, as you can see, I'm trying to preserve the family home. It's 100 years old. Uh, my grandfather was the first practitioner here and throughout uh, my mother was with, a lot of you remember Herman Massey. 
So a lot of the palm trees, they worked on parks and recs and getting and developing the city landscape that we have here, as well as working with Art uh, Keebler with the Arts Council. Um, my concern is with the fact that that was originally a gas station. And those tanks, as far and as far back as I can remember in history, have never been removed from the ground. And leaks, has gas has leaked to the middle of the vacant lot between my house and the corner that they're proposing to move to. Um, to the rear of me is the um, Italian cemetery. And there was a pond that they have cleared, since cleared out one half of it because trees were growing in it. Every time something is done or renovations or building is done in East Tampa in this area, my re most recent issue is with when they did the cleaning into the rear of me, I had, he was the size, uh, two of them were the size of a baby koala. It was a possum. I have never seen them that huge or that big. But with this development, because it has been an ice cream parlor, it has been a swap shop, it's been some of everything on that corner, I'm asking that it be tended for the infestation that's in there that has occurred over the years with the vacancy of it. Also the fact that those gas tanks have leaked part way between my house and that um, corner, that that building also be placed on the furthest corner away from me. Over the years, that lot in between has been used by anybody that wants to have any type of revival or type of gathering. The last gathering that was there was the Rivers Church. And you can just imagine what we were dealing with in the parking issues and all of that. Along with that, I'm asking for a buffer wall, at least eight feet, that's on my side that's close for where their property line is gonna end because of the noise and also they're gonna have parking and also the fact that the garbage bin, I would like to have it placed next to their building, not next to me. Um, and uh, besides that, um, the tenting and everything else that I'm asking for, I'd like to have that done, but I'm not in favor of this event. Thank you very much. So just to clarify, this is your grandfather's home? It was. He's deceased now. It and, is not. But it, you, you kept it in the family. Yes. No, I know the home very well. It's very very it's, beautiful yeah, home. It's a hundred years old, so. It's very well maintained. Um, Mr. Chairman, if the speaker could say, state her name for the record, please. And spell I'm it sorry, please. Andrea White, 3321 North 22nd. Thank you. Mm, All right. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, sir. Um, if you need clarification, maybe you should address it to staff first, if it relates to Euclidean rezonings, some okay. of the issues that were raised. Okay, is there anybody else that wishes to speak on this item? Okay, um, petitioner, you, did you hear the concerns that the uh, lady spoke about? Would you like to address them? Okay, go ahead. And then we have staff present and of course council members can chime in. Thank you, Ms. White, uh, for bringing up the concerns. We just, we did um, uh, talk to the uh, FDEP regarding the tanks, and there is a clear documentation that the tanks were removed in <coughs> 1988 is when the leak happened, and right after the leak happened in 89, the tanks were removed, and uh, they put out uh, small wells where they are checking for the contaminant, uh, excuse my language if, if there is any mistakes that I make, but uh, they, are, they have been uh, uh, checking for the contaminants every now and then. The last time they did the contaminant check was in 2015, and it is slightly over the normal. So it is, if, even this morning, before I came uh, to the meeting here, I did speak to um, uh, Laura, who, is, um, who has got the contract from the FEP and the EDP, who are working on the property to clear the, the contaminants. Uh, I have the, if I may, I can uh, provide you with the letter that they are working on it to um, and the, the they have a score in terms of how much deep the contamination is and we are at 10 which is right around where which is low low contamination score and we are approved for the city for the city to pay for the contamination to be cleared and we are right around she said that it takes about 18 months for them to clear and when i spoke to the fep they said that i can 
at risk if I want to build anything on the empty lot that if there is any contamination that I'll be responsible to clear it off. So we are not doing any structural change to what the building is. And as uh, Ms. White rightly mentioned, there, were, uh, there was an ice cream shop, apparently the previous owner who had it, they did all kinds of things because the auto store which was there was grandfathered and the zoning was never approved for it. So every time he tried to start something, the city went and they closed it down. So having said that, we have the, the plans that I have submitted, we are not doing any structural change but we are only going to uh, we are only going to modify the inside to convert it into a pharmacy. So we are not bringing in or um, uh, doing any changes. And in terms of the EPA, ma'am, definitely they are going to clear it. And we already got the confirmation, and they already gave a contract to a third-party vendor who is actually coming uh, in the next. Because of COVID, it is delayed. But this is the last email and the correspondence I got in May first that they are coming to clear off the, all the contamination already, so. And I believe what was mentioned was a wall or some <coughs> kind of buffer between the properties? So as of now, we have no plans of developing the empty lot and it is going to be fenced in <coughs> so that we are not going to uh, um, allow any other activity or parking or anything because I, we have enough to, parking can, with the site where we are building as is. So that is not going to be used for anything. And would you be willing to put that on the site plan just to, or sir, would you have to put it on the sir, site plan? No, sir, sir. No, oh, it's I'm, Euclidean, never mind. I'm sorry, I have to, yeah, I have to interrupt you. This is not a PD site plan. Okay. This is, the, the applicant is requesting just commercial general zoning district, so if this rezoning is approved, any use that's allowed within the commercial general zoning district could be placed on the property, not necessarily his specific prop, uh, project. Okay. So Pardon. any CG use, there's no site plan that's being reviewed. Any use that's allowed within the CG zoning district could be constructed and it's all reviewed through permitting. And they must comply with all applicable land development and other code requirements. Okay, thank you very much. And Whether if I may follow up, Mr. Chairman, um, with regard to um, Euclidean rezonings and the use table, you have that available to you and anything within the CG uses, um, if this property uh, changes uh, use, as long as it's within that um, uh, category, it uh, doesn't have to come back to council or uh, be rezoned. Are there any comments or questions from council members? Okay. Councilman Miranda. I, I just, uh, the, the part, uh, and there, there's a little doubt in my mind about when, when you have contaminants in a property and uh, one way or the other, how do we make sure that those contaminants are removed if there's any found to any degree because those are things that have been there for maybe 60, 70 years, 80 years. And uh, how do we, uh, because once this is approved, there's no guarantees of anything. It's done and bye-bye and see you tomorrow. I, I'm just with the facts. Uh, I'm not against you or anything else, sir. I just want some surety that okay. since the contaminants was brought up and you admitted it about the container, and I know it has nothing to do with the zoning, I, I understand that, but I, I just feel that there's gotta be some safety for the human welfare of those that live in the area. If I may, Mr. Chairman, yes, just to interrupt, I apologize, Kate Wells, Chief Assistant City Attorney. You know, those questions um, I would submit to council are not relevant to the proposed zoning that's that's before you, and I would ask council to focus on. And I admitted that. I, I understand, but we're now asking for testimony on items that that don't speak to um, the the rezoning. So I just had to say that for the record. All right, Councilman Dinkfelder. Mr. Mr. Moran, are you are you done? I'm sorry. Can I? Are you done? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Ms. White, um, I too have driven by that beautiful house many times and, and noticed that I didn't realize it was yours. Um, I try to stay undercover as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're in the process of redoing a, a, an old bungalow, so I know the challenges. But anyway, uh, putting that aside, you heard the gentleman, I guess he's working with the DEP yes, um, to get the, you know, the underground uh, migration addressed, which, I, you know, I would, I would argue that's positive. Um, I, d I don't know what you said about tenting. Did you indicate, are you typically? No, the score. They said that there is an, um, this is, again, I'm not an expert at this. I'm a pharmacist. 
but if there is an LSE score, which is 10, which is right around in 1988 to now, it took about that many years. No, I think, I think she's just talking about basic termite tanning. Yeah, I'm not, not so much termite, but uh, the, the rats. They're, yeah. they're quite Are you, large. I mean, typically when you buy a new building, you have, have it tanned. Yeah. Is, yeah. is that part of your plan? Yeah, the, I mean, if, it is, if there is, so far when we went in there, we have not noticed any infestation. And it has been empty for the last almost a year. There it's no been over. A, it's been over a year since it's been vacant. The, the yeah. guy no just used it. No activity whatsoever inside. All right. But if there is any in infestation, we will absolutely take care of. Uh, and even for our business, it's a pharmacy, so I have to take care you, of it. You would so. think, uh, Ms. White. Here, here's the concern that was mentioned by our legal legal staff over there, as well as uh, zoning staff, is because. Because it's a Euclidean zoning and not a planned development. If it was a planned development, he'd have a site plan, a big site plan that we'd roll out and it would specify all these details and we could add notes and we could make him, uh, if we so decided, we could make him do X, Y, and Z a lot more than we can't, we can't do any kind of, of that sort of stuff that you've asked us to do, and I apologize. Um, in this type of zoning, in the Euclidean zoning, which, which basically means he's going from the, the, the residential zoning to a commercial zoning. Now with that said, my question to you, Ms. White, is, is you know, with, now that you know that, are you objecting to uh, the rezoning from the residential zoning that it cur currently has, even though it doesn't sound like it's been used for residential, but it has a residential zoning, and they're going to a commercial zone, zoning CG. So with all that clear, um, I'm just wondering, uh, do you object to the, to the CG zoning based upon any off-the-record assurances that he's given us? And I say off-the-record because we can't bind him to that. Right. I, I object to it. It was originally residential. We know what, what housing is like here in Hillsborough County. You've done a great job after you get around the roundabout circle where you crammed in all those houses along 21st on both sides. So if you started doing that here and behind the store, uh, Monday they started uh, building another domain home. So why not make that flow? It's a, it was a state highway. Now it's been deeded over to the city, 22nd Street. If you're gonna do it and as we're going from Hillsboro to Ebor City, to downtown, to the expressway, to the crosstown, keep it residential. I would much rather see that because if you go to Hillsboro and 22nd, you've got Walgreens, you've got um, Walmart, they have a pharmacy there. That used to be a grocery store. The, I think you remember the Perinos? Yeah. They had that corner and it was very successful. And I don't know if the barbershop is gonna be coming with you, no, but even that, you know, I would re just rather see it residential. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Sure. Yes, sir. The, the only spot that is like after Miss White's house and then a couple of houses, the spots after that is all uh, uh, commercial. So, I mean, Miss White must be. Yeah, that's on the other side of 26 and 27. That's 22nd Street. Heading uh, north. See if there's anybody else. So there is CG right. on else either phone? side of what we are asking. All right. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else in the public that wishes to speak on this item? All right. Seeing none, may I have a motion to close? I think he, he probably gets from both. Second. Do you have, before we close, do you have anything else that you would like to say, sir? Do, um, regarding um, uh, Councilman, do you, would you like to see anything regarding the FEP, how the process that they are going to clean up and... Uh, the success. No, that's not relevant to the uh, zoning. I was told by the godmother of zoning that I can't say that. <laughs> because we did, we, we did do all the due diligence, and we got an approval from Lee Davis. But I appreciate it very much. Um, you know, in terms of pharmacy. And we've been there since 2002. We've been serving uh, Tampa Bay as a pharmacy. And we've been in the community serving the pharmacy for the last four years. Uh, and the latest thing, because, because of COVID, we did a, a major food drive for 200 families uh, where you know they drove in and then picked up food. So we have always been part of Belmont Heights and most of them use our pharmacy, so. Thank you very much. All right, again, nobody else for public comment at this time, no? 
May I have a motion to close? So moved. Second. Motion from Councilman Miranda with the second, second. from Councilman Citro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, Councilman Dingfelder, would you like to take this item? Councilman Vieira, would you like to take this item? Um, this is, I'll, I'll read it and see what happens. And please speak directly into the microphone. Yes. I know some people watching on TV say that they cannot hear some of us because we're not speaking directly this into the microphone. This is item number six. six. That's what I thought. Yes, sir. Um, I read an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration, an ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 3335 North 22nd Street in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification RM24, residential multifamily, the CG commercial general providing an effective date. Do we have a second Wait, to the motion? Wait, excuse me, there's, there's more to the, um, the if you can take uh, the, um, the language as to the burden of proof. Oh, I'm sorry, Where, okay. where's that at? That I haven't is, read one of these in a while because I was chair, so. Um, in your brown folder? Yeah. Is there a brown? There you go. And you'll see it by um, item number. application number, yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, John. Um, it is compliant with applicable land use policies as noted in Planning Commission staff report. The language is, com is local, or strike that. The property is located within the community mixed use 35 future land use category, which provides for a broad range of uses. That includes retail, general, commercial, service, office, and residential uses. The request would allow for development that would be compatible with the surrounding area. Man, I shouldn't have read this. Uh, consistent with the long range development pattern anticipated under the CMU 35 land use category without having an adverse impact upon the North Ebor neighborhood. The request is consistent with policy um, direction in the comprehensive plan, which promotes a range of uses within proximity to one another. Land use policies 1.23, uh, 1.2.3, 1.2.8, 8.9, 8 and 8.2.1. General requirements in section 27-156A, the applicant is seeking to rezone to a Euclidean zoning district and is not seeking any waivers from the GC or from the CG zoning district. The subject site complies with the minimum width and lot area requirements for the CG zoning district. Evidence supports that the property is surrounded by single family residences to the east and south, retail to the north and multifamily to the west. Thank you very much. Is there a second to the motion? Is there a any, second to the any motion? I'd like to second this motion or even vote for it, but under the circumstances, the way it's presented at it, uh, Euclidean zoning, I have no other choice but to second the motion. Although I'm gonna, at your word, I'm gonna take you for a word you're gonna say you're gonna do, and I appreciate it. Yes. Because I used to have hair like yours, look what happened to mine. We have a motion from Councilman Vieira with the second from Councilman Miranda. Councilman Dingfelder, do you have any discussion? Yes, sir, thank you. Um, so here's my concern is when I look at the map. Please speak into the uh, microphone. You can I'm pull sorry. your mask down. Thank you, sir. When I look at the map and when everybody, I hope, looks at the map, the aerial, uh, the fo aerial photograph, this is, uh, Ms. White describes her homestead, family homestead for 100 years, and we've seen the picture, but also if you look at the aerial map, um, her property butts right up against the vacant parcel. It looks like there's at least two or three vacant parcels before you get to the building. Now, on the one hand, you could say, oh, well, that's good because there's a good buffer area between her and the building. My concern is, is the rezoning that they've come in and asked for is not just the corner property, which includes the structure, but it's to go CG for those entire three or four lots um, all that ends up butting up against her property. So then you say, okay, what's the big deal, John? Well, Mr. Shelby pointed us to the schedule of permitted uses which has the yellow stripe on it and the, the permitted uses in the CG and we're all familiar with CG is, is very broad. Uh, it includes vehicle repair, minor. Okay, so in other words, and I'm not saying you're gonna do this, obviously that's not your intent, but 
five years from now you could decide to move your pharmacy, somebody else has the zoning on the property, they could, they could build that entire three or four lots out with a vehicle repair shop uh, all the way across all three or four of those lots. Um, some of the other uses that I saw on there, it said club, a club is allowed use, is an allowed use. I don't know what a club is exactly, but it doesn't sound like something that we want next door to a historic property, uh, immediately next door to a historic property. Um, anyway, so if you look at, if you look at all those uh, uses, some of them can be pretty intense. Even a hotel motel um, is an allowable use, which could be a lot of traffic and noise etc. immediately adjacent to that historic property. So with all due respect to this gentleman who seems like a, a fine young man and professional and with good intentions, I think the zoning came in a little broad. I think the zoning came in to, the, you're, you're coming in with zoning to include all those lots when in reality maybe if you just had just tightened up and just, you know, just done that immediate lot or something like that. Um, you know, I might be a little more supportive, but, but in, light of, in light of the possibilities, then, then I have great concern with that. Thank you very much. All right. And if I may, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. So can, can this be redone and, and resubmitted in a way that it will be more narrowly tailored, that gives us more discretion over the use of this property? Kate Wells, Chief Assistant City Attorney, it is the applicant's choice on whether or not they would want to move forward. Of course, with a rezoning, it's never a negotiation. Yeah. So you get to consider the application that is before you based upon the applicable provisions and the comprehensive plan and the land development code. Let me, and, I don't, and I don't know, Mr. Chair, if this would require the, the meeting to be open, but I, I you know, do think you know, I, I moved the motion just to see where it went. Councilman Dinkfelder's words, uh, John, you had me at hello, so to speak. I, I, I think you make up some, some good points there, so to speak. And I think the um, applicant may uh, want to consider um, other choices, so to speak, you know, given the direction of where this is going. I don't know if we have to reopen this or what is there a, Was there a second to the motion? Yeah. There was a second yes. to the motion, yes, sir. Chair. Sure. Yes, sir. I, I just want to say I concur with um, Mr. Dingfeld. All right. Council, I, I suspect um, you have several options. You can take a vote on that and see where it goes from there, unless the maker of the motion has now asking uh, that it be withdrawn. Under basically. that, I would withdraw under the idea that, um, I know, sir, you're not represented, um, but I don't know, maybe, is there anybody with staff that can talk to this gentleman outside about his options? or? Yeah. Or am I overstepping my bounds? Yeah. I'll have the city attorney's ask, uh, office ask that. I'm, I'm Mary Samaniego for the record. I'm the planner that's working with the applicant. Um, I guess it would clarify what, what is exactly the concern with having a CG zoning district. Like what, if he was to apply for a plan development, what? Now you're getting into additional questions that are going to yeah, provide for open. testimony. Motion so that, I guess. to reopen if I may. We have a motion to reopen this public second. hearing by Councilman Vera with a second from Councilman Citra. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. All um, right. If I may, Mr. Chair, uh, getting to Councilman Dingfelder's points on the future use of the land and uh, such, you know, vast potential, uh, maybe giving Council more discretion in terms of the, the, the use to address the, uh, you know, reasonable concerns that were uh, asserted by uh, uh, Ms. Uh, White. Is, is that something that could be you know, resubmitted in a different form or? And if I could, if I could elaborate yes. a little, yeah, go, go if I could elaborate just a Councilman little bit. Councilman Dingfelder. I'm sorry. Again, we can't tell this applicant what to do. And Kate, I agree with you completely. We, we might suggest what you could do, but we can't tell him. The, um, if he opted to go for a PD, obviously he, he could show those two vacant lots, I don't know if it's two or three, the, the vacant lots between his building and Ms. White's house, he could show those on the PD as parking, okay? And he could show what, you know, how, how the parking would work, et cetera, et cetera. 
not that that hasn't been a huge issue in, in her mind, but, but he could show that, and that would create the buffer um, that I think that, that would be desirable to, to her and the protection of her home from the CG uses. Otherwise, that CG use could go right up to, you know, within, you know, what, seven feet or? No, any CG, any commercial use of budding a single family house has a 15 foot landscape buffer and a six foot high wall. Okay, and 15 that's the standard feet. part of I said it. 10 feet, you say 15. My point is it goes all the way up to her property. Okay, I understand we have situations like that, but it doesn't mean we have to approve them. So now the other, my other question is, could he shrink down his, C, his CG request to just be his building and continue to park on that land that's, that's um, residential next to it? That would require a special approval. That would require a special use approval. So he could. But, it, but again, the same code requirements would still apply in either scenario. It's, it's not a question of processing. He still would be required a 15 foot buffer and a six foot high wall. Okay. But again, if he, I just, I'm just trying to be clear on what exactly, I'm trying to avoid having to further delay this applicant, exactly what the PD would be asking for beyond what the normal code requirement. I'll repeat it again. If I was drafting in the PD, I'd have the existing building, because that's what he wants, and I'd show the parking lots, and then the parking lots would forever remain parking lots as long as that PD remained. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other council members? Would it? Mr. Dingfelder or, or staff, wouldn't the PD also limit the uses to then? I mean, the whole list of uses that you went through were kind of carried to. I'm not going to give a legal opinion. All we got to ask Kate Wells, Chief Assistant City Attorney, if he were to change this rezoning to a plan development, the site plan would identify the specific uses that would be allowed. And it sounds like council's concern is the broad range of uses allowed under the proposed rezoning. I would submit to the applicant, he has a choice tonight whether he wants council to vote this up or down tonight, or if he would like to continue it to consider his other options. All right, sir, so the options are, we can take a vote on this tonight to approve or deny it, or you can continue this to a future date and then modify the application to a PD, which would allow council to uh, well, in general, to put further restrictions to make sure that the properties, because there is a residential home there, that the empty lots and whatnot and other concerns are protected. Because what happens is if we are to approve it as it is now, and you decide in a year or five years to move out of there, how it's written by our code and whatnot, there's so many different things that can be allowed. And that's what Councilman Dingfelder read off. And that's a concern of the uh, neighbor there in the home and the, and the lady that spoke. Um, it's up to you. We, you can uh, ask us to continue this to a future date and then work with staff to modify it to a plan development and modify the application, or we take a vote to approve it or deny it tonight. I can't tell you what to do, I mean, but those are the different options. And Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, sir. If I may, um, if this were to be continued, uh, uh, typically how long is uh, would it be continued, what are you talking about, 30 days, 45 days? No, sir, it would have to begin the process all over, so it would be about a four month continuance right. because he would have to apply for a PD and I would have to go through the full round of reviews. Mm -hmm. well, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, and I, I didn't even get to page three. If you could speak into the microphone, yes, I'm sir. sorry. I didn't even get to page three, which says retail sales gasoline. So, those three or four lots could be knocked, everything could be knocked down and you could have a, just a lovely gas station mm -hmm. right next to this historic property. Thank you very much, Councilman Carlson. Could someone from staff also please tell him what happens, you talked about potentially a four month delay to, to reapply, tell him what happens if it's denied. Kate Wells, Chief Assistant City Attorney, if the application is denied this evening, there is a prohibition, I believe, for 12 months before coming back before City Council to address the rezoning. 
All right. Thank you very the much. Same use. Yeah. If I may, Mr. Chair. Yes, um, Mr. Yes, sir. And thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Um, do you do you, would you like to take ten minutes to think it over or and, and speak with someone or? Can I? Yeah. Sure. Perfect. I mean, it's. I mean, it is in the. It's always been RM, and it is all. The empty lots which are which are there are residential. And then the address is 3335, which even when we originally started the process, that is originally what I thought, even I could leave those as residential and just use the, the existing auto store as the pharmacy and you leave them because they are contaminated and they cannot be developed until they are cleaned up. And which since 1988 to now, it is still in the list. I mean, we are still waiting for our number to come. It might take another 10 years, 15 years. We don't know how long. So having said that, in, if there is any way that I can submit just the 333 for that. But when I checked with the, uh, there was no provision for me to submit just for that one lot and not, uh, it just, um, I mean, without including the whole property. That is That was one of the issues. Ma'am? Sir, um, one option is uh, within the realm of zoning, one can um, request to decrease the area of the rezoning. So instead of the entire, I'm gonna try to explain this as clearly as possible. Instead of the entire 0 0.56 acres being rezoned to CG, he could reduce that size to a certain point of enough area that one has to meet the minimum lot size of the CG zoning district Two, make sure that the remaining piece still meets the RM24 zoning district standards, and three, is enough land for him to be able to redevelop his property with his new use, including all required infrastructure and parking. So that is an option that could occur. We would have to revise the legal description on the ordinance, so would that be a two week, or would that be like a 30 day? You'd have to see what he was with. Right. So that so that would be another option. He could reduce the size of the Euclidean rezoning, but again, it would still be a Euclidean rezoning, and it would allow all those CG uses. If I may, Mr. Red, sure. Yes, sir. Maybe these options need to be explained to this very nice gentleman, maybe away from the, the public, because I'm, I'm sure if he's like me, he's under pressure right now and maybe not processing it. At least I'm, you know. My, my only okay. biggest concern here is the existing store where we are right now, we are having issues with parking, and we are already cited from the city, um, you know, for not having parking to an extent where you know they might even close us down. That is the reason why we were trying to work with the city, trying to expedite this so that we can move into the new location and across the street from Lee Davis too, because they, all their patients come and pick up medications, and we service Hillsborough County, all the unprivileged, uh, you know, financially crisis people. So. That was like the whole idea was in the best interest of the community, and uh, you know to be part of the community. That that is what we have been uh, always part of Belmont Heights. We did so much for Belmont Heights in the last few years. So. Anybody else have any comments or questions? So, what is it that you would like to do? Would you like to? Have a few minutes and think it over, make a decision now, or have us take a vote. Can I talk to Ms. Simney first? Is it okay if we move on to the next item while you speak to him and then we'll come back to it? No, sir, because I have the next item. Okay. Uh, Unless uh, we would have to have a recess, I would think. Okay. Recess. Let's do a 10 minute recess so you can have an opportunity to speak with her and then we'll finish the uh, rest of the agenda. Well, we are, we are in recess until, you, I'm sorry? Yes, recess until, you said, 10 minutes? 7.55. Thank you.
roll call, please. Vieira? Here. Goods? Carlson? Here. Yingfelder? Here. Citro? Here. Miranda? Here. And Maniscalco? Here. Okay, sir, were you able to speak with the staff? Yes, sir. Uh, for the advice, I continuation of the Sorry, I don't. I'm just having difficulty you're, finding you're requesting words, a, right words. I don't want to use the wrong words. I'm you're sorry. requesting a continuation? Yes, sir. And you said a continuation would require at least four months to make the modification. Yeah, he's just requesting a continuation There's no to no date. Oh, wait. He, okay. He will re-notice because he's going to do a different type of rezoning of plan development. And that keeps it legally sufficient, doesn't it? Council, I have an issue with that and because that came up just you very recently. You have to speak recently. into the microphone, sir. That came, that came up very recently with that. Um, if council recalls, I believe it came up Tuesday. Was that when it was, Mr. Dinkfelder? Do you recall the issue of when something was came to council and then was supposed to be noticed and then it was handled differently and council was not notified? I'm just wondering, maybe what we do is, can we set it to a date certain so at least the public is on notice that it's on and if it's canceled, is there another way to do that? If I may, yeah. he, if this comes back before city council, he's gonna be requesting a different rezoning. He will have to re-notice in any event. So it does not need to be continued to a date certain. The whole purpose of continuing an application to a date certain is to avoid having to re-notice. He is going to have to re-notice this because of the direction. Uh, he's going to go in a different direction and not pursue the Euclidean rezoning. So I would submit to you that there is not an issue. Yeah, because it starts from scratch and resets it because legally he has the, to re-notice and basically it's a, a new application without really being a new application. It's a significant modification. I see. Okay. Well, thank you, Council. I, I appreciate okay. that, and I, I respect that. And if that's uh, Council's pleasure, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll stand by that. Is there anybody here that wishes to speak on this continuance? It'll come back differently. It's going to be a completely new hearing, essentially. So you will be noticed, and you will know. There will be no surprises. The public will have uh, full knowledge of this. Although I will tell you, Mr. Chairman, and forgive me for interrupting, but I will tell you that I've learned from experience that sometimes it doesn't come back at all and you don't know about it. So that's an option as well. You mean it gets some administrative approval? It, well, I don't know what the options are, but one of them is to not proceed with a rezoning if that's there, his choice as well, just to let you know. Me. There's no way this thing can, can die because the rezoning is dead then. There's no way, I'm not a lawyer, but if this young man who is very well educated, I can tell by the way you handle yourself, you have excelente trabajo, excellent job. I can tell that if this gentleman here doesn't come back, which I'm sure he will, there's no way administrative they can do this. No way at all. And that's council's pleasure, and I understand that, and I thank you. All right, there you go. That. And that would be it. All right, uh, do we need a motion to close before we so move forward. Forward. No, no, it no, it's it's opened. It remains open. Oh, are you going to just have him right. withdraw that then? Or continue. 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 No, he's just continuing. Continue to the applicant is the asking to continue the application. So moved. Mr. Chairman, for the record, it was the motion for first reading withdrawn. Yes, sir. So it's going to be a motion to continue now. The Thank motion you. from Councilman Vieira is withdrawn. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion to continue from Councilman Vieira. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Councilman Miranda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. Thanks. Thank you. All right. We move on to item number nine, and then we have item number 12, and then we go home. Now, item number nine. Maybe. Mary Samaniego, Planning, Design, and Development Coordination, REZ 2029. It's a rezoning request for the property at 3612. West Swan Avenue from R01 to PD for medical office and business professional office. Jennifer Malone with your Planning Commission staff. We are in South Tampa in the Gulfview neighborhood. I have Henderson Boulevard, South Del Mabry Highway, and West Swan Avenue, which is where the subject site is located. It creates an interesting um, triangular uh, form in this part of the city. It is um, Henderson and South Del Mabry Highway are commercial corridors. We have a lot of commercial activity on those corridors, but there's a lot of housing in this area as well. The adopted future land use of the site, excuse me, is residential 20 
Um, to the north is residential 10. That's the orange color. This is a single family detached housing future land use category. This is community mixed use 35 that allows for those commercial uses. That's along Henderson Boulevard and South John Labry Highway. Um, this is a request for an office through a plan development. Typically in the residential 20 future land use category, these requests can be considered if the subject site meets locational criteria. In this future land use designation, one of those criteria is that it is located on a collector roadway. West Swan Avenue is a collector roadway. Additionally, within the comprehensive plan, we have a statement that um, properties with an existing residential office zoning shall not be subject to the locational criteria and the applicant already has the residential office zoning. Um, so we did find this consistent with the underlying future land use designation and those criteria in the comprehensive plan. We also found that it was comparable and compatible with the development pattern as West Swan Avenue is predominantly office in character and that is how it's been developed given its proximity to Henderson Boulevard and South Del Mabry Highway. Um, and that concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions. Thank, thank you. you very much. Are there any questions? Next up, thank you. Thank you. Mary Samaniego, again, they're asking for a plan development for medical office and business professional office uses. The property is located at 3612 West Swan Avenue. Um, the property currently contains a building that's approximately 6,400 square feet, the applicant uh, with a photographic studio. The applicant is proposing to partially demolish that building and renovate the remaining 3,600 plus or minus square feet for either medical office or business professional office uses. Um, so here is the proposed PD site plan. There's direct access on a South Sterling Street. Um, if you refer to, or to your staff report, um, waiver number three is to allow non-residential traffic access to a local street. South Sterling Street is considered a local street with some residential office zoning districts, which is a residential, uh, allows residential uses. Um, based on the combination of uses or the maximum use of medical office, the required parking would be 22 spaces with 16 spaces being provided. That's a 22% reduction. That is another waiver, waiver number one on page one. Um, due to the presence of a very large tree um, on the property line, actually there's two here, the applicant is requesting to reduce the backup distance for these two parking spaces instead of seven feet to five feet to try to stay as far away as possible from the trunk and the protective radius of that tree in that kind of area right there. So that's waiver number two on page one. Um, they are asking for freestanding sign to be oriented towards South Sterling Street, which again is a local street. So they request a waiver to have a commercial sign oriented towards a local street. And the last waiver that they are requesting is the co they're working again, as I stated, kind of with an existing site and existing development with parking. Um, there is only two feet from their parking lot to the property line. The code requires an eight foot VUA buffer and only two feet is present. So they're asking for a waiver to reduce that vehicle use area buffer from eight feet um, landscaped down to two feet. Um, planning, design, and development coordination has um, some slight modifications between first and second reading. Transportation did find this inconsistent with site modifications to reduce the number of parking spaces from 22 spaces down to 16, as well as the local street access, and thirdly, to the backup distance. And natural resources found this inconsistent with site modifications. Um, natural resources inconsistency analysis is on page three of your staff report, primarily because of the eight foot vehicle use area um, reduction of down to two, two feet is not adequate space to provide the required buffer plantings. Um, the rest of the staff report includes your findings and, and criteria for waivers. There are no historic landmarks within 1,000 feet of the subject property. And saying that, the development review compliance staff has reviewed the application, found it inconsistent with the City of Tampa Land Development Code. Please refer to the transportation development review related to parking 
space reduction, local street access, and backup waivers and natural resources related to the buffer reduction. Do you have any questions? Do we have any questions for staff? Councilman Dinkfeld. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, no, I don't have any question for staff, but I, just as a point of order, um, I wanted to make a disclosure. Um, the, uh, several years ago, I had, uh, with my real estate broker's hat on, uh, I had this property listed. Um, uh, subsequently, by the time it got sold to these folks, uh, it was no longer my listing. So I, I don't even know who, you know, who the buyers ended up being. Um, and I have no, I have no involvement, no relationship, and therefore no conflict in my opinion, Mr. Shelby. Uh, and sir, you have no financial stake one way or the other. This would not inure to your special private gain or loss. Is that correct? That's correct. And um, based upon your previous experience, you uh, assert today that you can be fair and impartial. Totally. Thank you very much. It would be my, it would be my uh, opinion then that uh, you do have uh, uh, no conflict of interest would be your obligation to vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to All make, right. make that known because my picture and my sign was on that property for about a year, so I didn't want anybody to think that, you know, that I still had an interest in it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Is this your first appearance before City Council since you left? Welcome yes, back. Yes, Chairman, it is. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Good evening. Chairman Maniscalco, members of council, I'm Abby Feely, Associate uh, Director of Planning and Zoning with Stearns Weaver Miller, 401 East Jackson Street. Um, pleased to be before you tonight. With me this evening are John and Susan King, uh, the applicants for 3612 West Swan, and Mark Sullivan with Florida Engineering. We are before you tonight to request a rezoning from R01 to PV for Office Medical and Business Professional, as Mary just shared with you. Uh, the current building on the property is 6,438 square feet, and we are asking to reduce that, reconfigure the site for 3,660 square feet. I have provided each of you with a copy of the presentation that I have about to to give, um, as well as some letters of support from surrounding business owners in the Swan Sterling area. Uh, general location, I think both Jennifer and Mary went over the general location. We are on Swan Avenue, east of South Del Mabry Highway. Uh, we are in the Tampa Conference of Plan South Tampa Planning District and in the Gulf View Neighborhood Association. The property is 0.31 of an acre, and it is shown here to you in blue. It's at that southeast corner of West Swan and South Sterling. This is an interesting commercial block. It's bounded by Swan on the north, South Sterling on the west, and Henderson Boulevard on the southeast. The future land use is the R20. It allows for medium and lower density uses. It allows for an FAR of 0.5 and building heights typically up to three stories. The R20 does allow for up to an R01 zoning district. And in the R01 zoning district, medical office is a special use too. or we can present it to you like we are this evening as a PD because we need some additional waivers besides what is just um, allowed under a special use. You see, we're kind of the hole in the donut here. You've got commercial general zoning all along Dale Mabry and that wraps around at that Henderson intersection. And in this R01 section here, you have a series of different offices. You have the SEAL swim school. Um, there are just a number of different uses uh, in this area. For the, R, for the medical office in the R01, it is required a minimum zoning lot of 10,000 square feet. We have 13,000 square feet, so we are satisfying that. Um, and it does discuss reductions of required parking. So it talks about the reduction of required number of off-street parking for medical office use may be approved by city council when it is demonstrated that the reduction will have no negative effects on the surrounding neighborhood. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. I wanted to give you a little feel of what's around there. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this intersection and this segment uh, of the city. 
Um, just north of us, there is another dental office on the north side of Swan, 3617 West Swan. Uh, there is a general office condo at 750 South Sterling. That's immediately to the south of us. Uh, 3702 West Swan is currently Dr. King's office. So they are, have been there since uh, 1994. And um, prior to 1994, it was a dental office that began in 1984 uh, with Dr., I always get his name wrong, Zelenko. Um, further down on Swan toward Dale Mabry, you have a state farm office. You have another dentist office. Um, Dr. Gribben, he provided a letter of support that's in your package tonight as well. Z could, it's Zalonka. Zalonka. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I want to stop on these pictures for just a minute because in the staff report there were two findings, one related to a vehicle use area buffer that we're asking to waive and one that is related to access to a local street. Um, so on these pictures, you can see in front of Dr. King's current office, there's planting in the right of way. The grass comes all the way down to Swan Avenue. The State Farm Office also has interesting plantings in the right of way and some larger landscaping rocks there, uh, as well as a palm tree. Um, these are on Swan. On Sterling, you have a parking lot that has no buffering um, and has access onto Sterling for a non-residential um, commercial use. The existing development of the property has a lot of non-conforming characteristics. Uh, this slide shows you our property line in green. You'll see the current parking that's there in this hammerhead style. Um, is encroaching into the public right-of-way. You'll also see we have a substantial amount of space from our property line to the curb, uh, and I have some other photos of that I wanna share with you. Again, going back to the waiver for the vehicle use area. I think this is a really good uh, slide. This was originally a repair shop in 1951. Uh, the building has been in this location for over 60 years. Um, and it is our intent to clean it up and kind of reconfigure the site uh, and pull that building back to this layout that I'm showing you here. So it is a single parcel. We're gonna go from those 6,400 square feet down to the 3,660. Our, um, we are going to remove the access on Swan and that hammerhead, and we're going to create a real parking lot there uh, with landscaping. Um, and change the access, which there is also an access currently on Sterling, we are gonna formalize that access uh, with curbed entryway and flares and then really circulate the site, I, I guess, more in a, in a better configuration. Here are the building elevations. This will be the north side facing Swan, um, which would have the parking area and landscaping in front of it. The west side is really gonna become that principal entry. We're gonna have two doors. Uh, there will be both medical office and some general office use within the building. And um, you can see the south along the vacated alley and then the east, which is the interior. So the waivers, um, Mary did a really great job at going over the waivers with you. Um, the first one is parking. We are asking for a six space reduction. We could have put two more spaces. However, we are saving a 28 inch, a 30 inch, and a 28 inch oak along that eastern boundary line, which limited us to putting additional spaces into that area. It did, however, result in us also shrinking that back out area from seven to five. Um, that being said, at the back of that five is the curb. You still can pull your car tires all the way to the curb and get the two feet overhang of the vehicle. So in reality, we actually have seven feet, um, but technically, because it is curbed, we have five feet. So that um, waiver is before you. 
The third waiver is the access to the local street. Um, I just want to put up the aerial that was used. Here's our property in red. I don't know if we can zoom in a little bit on this. Thank you so much. Um, from Swan to Henderson, uh, these are all residentially office, residential office zoning districts. They all have access onto Sterling. Um, 730 has access onto Sterling. The swim school has access onto Sterling. Bonefish that's at the next corner has access onto Sterling. And the commercial um, strip center here also has access onto Sterling. Dr. King currently has access onto Sterling. So we technically right now are the only property that don't have access, although we do have a non-conforming access. Um, but by doing this, we would actually be asked to put the access onto Swan, and it will be safer to put it on to Sterling. As you know, Swan is incredibly high traffic there in between Del Mabry and Henderson, and having people pull out there where there's a stop sign intersection right here with stop signs at Sterling would really create somewhat of a traffic conflict and not very safe circulation. So that is the waiver that goes with the access. The fourth waiver talks about this vehicle use area here. We are required an eight foot buffer. Um, we are asking to go down to two feet there and part of our rationale behind that is we are able to meet all the standards within our parking lot. We have a standard 18-foot spaces, standard 24-foot drive aisle, and then a standard compact of 16. Our other choice would have been to narrow down our drive aisle and give you four feet, but it really wouldn't have created the best safe circulation for the parking area. That being said, we have nine and a half, almost nine and a half feet from our property line to the sidewalk. So when we go down to the two feet, we'll actually be able to plant the required hedge and plantings in the adjacent right of way to our property. And that's why I showed you the other right of way along Swan that had those plantings and that that is the character of that area. I'll show you a couple more pictures of that momentarily. Um, lastly, we have a, signs are supposed to face collectors or arterials. In this case, if you were coming down Swan and our sign was facing Swan, you would not be able to see it until you were upon the property. So I'm going to show you that most of the businesses along Swan have the signs oriented the way that we are asking for our sign tonight. Just to show you quickly those rights of way, the first picture, um, this is the property immediately adjacent to the subject property. And you'll see if I put my pen here, this is all right of way. It's planted with low ground cover. Um, it provides an appealing side and some um, camouflage and, and buffering to the parking area. The intent of the VUA buffer is that it hides those vehicles and, and makes it look attractive so you're not seeing the vehicles sitting there. And we do intend to do that. We're just going to do it adjacent to our property in the right of way as, as, as code would allow. Here are these other two I showed you to the west, the State Farm, and um, this is the other dentist's office, uh, Dr. Griffin. Here is our property today and our uh, curbed access on, on Swan that will be closed off and then we will go ahead and improve that with the plantings and the hedge. Um, our, it will actually come back even further because these spots as I showed you, there's a few feet there and a few feet here. So we will cut all, we'll put this back install grass, restore it, and then have the hedge that we are required, as well as one tree per 40 linear feet. Um, what was interesting is, as I went around to show you some of the other local street access, I noticed that these all these other parking lots don't have any buffer. They don't have a hedge. They have nothing. So our buffer will actually be more appealing when we get to put our parking lot in and reconfigure it because we will have the required hedge. These are all parking lots along 
Sterling with their access. This is Bonefish. This is the property immediately to the south of us. And this is the Seal Swim School. Um, this is currently our entry, which will be cleaned up and moved up and reconfigured. This goes into a vacated alley right now. This is a look down Sterling. And then this is the other office at uh, commercial at the other corner of Sterling and Henderson. Um, in relation to the comprehensive plan, I do believe this project is consistent, as Jennifer Malone said. Uh, it is sensitive and compatible with the existing character of the area, low intensity, one story offices. That's what we are going to be providing. In addition, I provided some parking policies from the comp plan that talk about the presence of parking lots. Um, I think that what we are proposing will visually screen the parking lot and make it um, very appealing uh, and desirable. It also talks about providing parking credits for preservation of trees within the parking area, land use policy 15.3.6, um, which I do believe that this project is consistent with. Um, in conclusion, I'd just like to say that based on the evidence I have provided you in relationship to the existing character of the area, the reasons for the waivers, the justification for the waivers, I do feel that this project is consistent with section 27136 and the waiver criteria contained in 27139. Um, we were found consistent with the Tampa Comprehensive Plan and I do believe that City Council's approval of this project will allow for an adaptive reuse of an older um, non-residential structure as a medical office and a surrounding neighborhood serving use. Thank you. I'm available Thank you very much. Questions. Are there any questions from council members? Okay. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this item? Just one, uh, one comment before you close. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Thank you. Ms. Feely, uh, excellent job. No surprise. You did a great job when you were an employee uh, here and uh, very thorough presentation. But you would, you would be upset with me if I didn't have one minor correction for you. Is Because I was familiar with that building, the front part of the building, which is the little houses that I think you guys are going to be tearing down, were 60, 60 plus years old. The gentleman who had the photographic part of the building built that cinder block structure probably 30 years ago. So minor, cor minor correction for the record. Did a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else you'd like to add? No? Anybody else? All right. Can I get a motion to close? So moved. Second. We have a motion from Councilman Miranda, second from Councilman Citra. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Who would like to take this item, item number nine? I'll take it. Anybody? Councilman yeah. Dinkfelder, would you like to take sure. this? Sure. Let me find it in our little cheat sheets here. All right. I will, <clears throat> I will in regard to file number REZ 20-29, I'll move uh, the following ordinance for first reading, uh, public hearing on the application of being, no, excuse me, an ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 3612 West Swan Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in section one from zoning district classifications R01, residential office to PD, plan development, medical office, and business professional office provide an effective date. And specifically, um, I'll move the ordinance and and uh, direct any revisions uh, shown as required by staff uh, on the revision sheet. I believe the applicant has met its burden of proof, providing competent substantial evidence that the development as conditioned shown on the site plan is consistent with the Comprehensive Plan City Code. And, and with this motion, adopt the findings and reasonings of the Comprehensive Planning Commission staff and the staff report and find that the requested waivers meet the purpose and intent of the PD zoning district. Uh, I believe that uh, Ms. Feely, on behalf of her client, 
has uh, clearly indicated the justification for the various waivers that have been um, uh, proposed and uh, and I do believe that uh, they meet the waiver criteria identified in section 27-139 for N4 uh, as well as uh, 27-136. Thank you. All right, do we have second. a second? Second. We have a second from Councilman Miranda. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carried with goods being absent. Second reading and adoption will be on July 16th at 9.30 a.m. Thank you very much. We go to the final item of the night, which is item number 12. Another City of Tampa alum. Go ahead. Council, Ryan Manassi, Planning Design and Development Coordination. Um, item number 12 is application REZ 20-40 for the property located at 8702 Lake, Hunters Lake Drive. Um, they, are, they are going from PDA, Plan Development Alternative Place of Religious Assembly currently, to a Plan Development PD for Medical Office. Jennifer, Mul Jennifer Mullen with your Planning Commission staff. We are in the new Tampa Planning District this evening uh, at Bruce B. Downs Boulevard and Hunters Lake Drive. The subject site is outlined in the purple. Um, we have multifamily housing, a private recreational facility to the south. On the future land use map, <clears throat> this might be the simplest one I've shown all night. Um, the development pattern is SMU 6, that is the pink color. To the north is SMU 3, that stands for suburban mixed use. Um, these are designations that we typically see in New Tampa. Uh, to recognize um, the, the development pattern up there is um, a little different than the rest of the city. Um, we did find this consistent with the comprehensive plan. So while it is in New Tampa, it still has that suburban mixed use six future land use designation, which does encourage a mixed use development pattern. And we have several policies on the intent of that. However, the applicant is um, really only requesting this plan development to change a use. And since it's a um, not uh, a, a total redevelopment of the subject site, Planning Commission staff found that the, the, the site design was, um, was sufficient for these purposes, and we did find it consistent with the comprehensive plan. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ryan Manassi, Planning and Development. Again, the applicant is proposing to rezone the property from Plan Development Alternative PDA to Plan Development PD to allow for the renovation of a 48,556 square feet building for a medical office use. Property currently contains the 48,556 square feet building that has a place of religious assembly use, which will be renovated to that medical office use. Uh, the 5.74 acre property is located on the northeast corner of Bruce B. Downs Boulevard and Hunter, Hunters Lake Drive uh, intersection. It is surrounded by residential uses to the north and east in the PDA zoning district and outdoor commercial recreational facility. Um, as Jennifer pointed out, uh, and daycare and bank use to the south in the PDA zoning district. Um, also, there's wetland and auto repair in the west in the PD and PDA zoning district. Um, the PDE setbacks are, are as follows, uh, northeast at 105 feet, southeast at 47.8 feet, southwest at 68.5 feet, and northwest at 305.5 feet. Um, one of the revisions in the staff report is to make those whole numbers for the setbacks. Um, I'd just like to make that for the record. Um, the maximum building height is proposed at 35 feet. The required parkings based on the use of the building as a medical office is 291 parking spaces, and they are providing a total of 265 spaces. The propo uh, that proposal is 8.9% uh, difference for a parking waiver that requires your approval. If you'd uh, refer to page two of your staff report, it shows the uh, planning, design, and development coordination, site plan modifications that would be required between first and second reading. Um, number two on page two is transportation development review. They found it inconsistent due to the parking reduction. And natural resources is number three, which found it consistent with some additional information. I'd like to go show you the, or the aerial. And Jennifer did a, a good job pointing out the location. It's Bruce B. Downs and Hunter, Hunters Lake Drive. The subject site is outlined in red. As you can see, there's this uh, large water retention feature here and then wetland here, wetland. Um, this is the bank use as well as the daycare going into the recreational area and the multifamily use here. Across the street, just for your reference, that's auto repair as well. 
Um, there are no historic landmarks or uh, in the local or national district in this in this buffer location that's showed in the thousand foot buffer. These are just some site pictures that were taken of the site. As you can see, it, it's a large parking area in the front with the structure in the rear. Um, I'll show you the site plan here in a second to show you this, some of the modifications. I want to give you an idea of looking northeast outside of the parking lot here. You can see this um, berm here that's built up to Bruce B. Downs, just to give you an idea of how that parking is looking from inside the subject site onto Bruce B. Downs. Um, here's the bank as well as the daycare. Uh, over here is southwest on Bruce B. Downs, and again, the subject, uh, subject side as well as some of the, 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 the wetland or the retention area over here on the northeast side. As you can see on the site plan, and I left my pen over there, I'll just use my finger, um, the, the new outdoor area here, this is the existing structure right here outlined and you can see the site plan does label very clearly where they're having some new additions to it the new roof overhang which is that dashed line and then the new outdoor seating area with the canopy that's projecting over here where that uh, water retention area is with that being said uh, the development review and compliance staff has reviewed the application and finds it inconsistent with the city of Tampa land development code um, please reference the findings by the transportation development review related to the requested waiver for the parking reduction uh, in the event the city council does approve this petition the requested waivers um, the report outlines additional modifications in the attached revision sheet that would be required between first and second reading and staff is available for any questions that you may have thank you very much are there any questions for staff if I may, uh, yes, sir. Uh, Chairman, I, I have a, and thank you for that, I have a, just a disclosure to make, I, I spoke with Mr. Shelby outside, I live 2.7 miles, it appears, away from this uh, facility, so. And, and you don't have any financial stake in the outcome of this case? I wish. And you have no reason other than to be fair and impartial, is that correct? No reason at all. Yeah. Okay, then my, on my, on my, uh, in my professional opinion, then you don't have a conflict of interest and you do have the obligation under Florida statutes to vote. Vote I shall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Applicant, please state your name for the record. Good evening, Council. Julia Mandel for the record, 401 East Jackson Street, Tampa, Florida, with the law firm of Gray Robinson. I guess we're having a little bit of an old, uh, uh, old uh, alumni uh, evening tonight with, with Ms. Feely and then myself. It's a pleasure always to get to watch her as well. Um, I am here with um, Michael Lawson, who is from Advent Health, who is the contract purchaser of this property, as well as Matt An Angarosa of SME Engineering. I'm gonna try and keep this presentation short. I, I know you had an incredibly long day today and it's been an incredibly long evening. Yes, I still do watch city council meetings. I know, it's crazy. Um, staff really did go a good job explaining to you what this project is and what we're trying to accomplish. It's actually kind of an interesting parcel of property. It, 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 it was part of a very old PDA as well as a very old DRI, the old Hunter's Green DRI. And in fact, what is currently on this property for zoning purposes is a PDA. And while the most recent use of the parcel was for a church, at one point this was actually a Winn-Dixie. And how I know that is because on the old, very old zoning plan, it is actually labeled Winn-Dixie. Uh, the only reason we had to come before you tonight with this PD was because that old PDA had a listing of uses, which listing of uses did not include medical office included all other manner of uses, uh, professional office, daycares, schools, uh, churches, a Winn-Dixie specifically, um, but grocery stores, retail. But because of that, um, when uh, we went to go look at whether or not uh, this property could be utilized for the purposes of a medical office, our only option really was to add, add that use through this PD process, so that's why we are here. As staff explained, there is one uh, waiver where you, there is an inconsistent finding. It's a very, very small parking waiver. I think it's like 8.9%. Since the intent is really an adaptive reuse of this existing building and the way it's configured, while uh, there might be an obligation to have, uh, I think it was 200, in 90 parking spaces, we're bringing it down a, a little bit. The way the site is configured, it's very much away from 
uh, any residential uses. It's a very self-contained lot, and the fact of the matter is it's highly unlikely you're ever going to have that many parking spaces needed, but if you did, it's not going to have a net negative impact into a neighborhood or onto uh, a busy street. It fronts right up on uh, Bruce B. Downs, and it does have that large berm. Uh, and it also is uh, as a side street as Hunter's Lake Drive, but that particular roadway is is uh, really uh, doesn't accommodate the opportunity for say overflow parking. So, and I know that that's a concern. Um, again, I, I'm trying to keep this short. I know everyone's tired. Um, I, I will go ahead and reserve any additional time if you have any questions or if you have any additional questions. Thank, Thank you very much. Are there any questions from members of the board, Councilman Vieira? I may, do you have any renderings or any um, photographs or, or you know, whatever uh, projections? And I happen to be wearing my hunter's green tie. I, I swear to God, this is no relationship. I just picked it up this morning. But Can you I, be I, fair and impartial, sir? Yeah. <laughs> One of my many ties. Uh, these are the general renderings that we have submitted as part of our packet. Keep in mind, this is an existing building, and if you've ever driven by it or you saw the pictures, it actually is in really nice condition. It's yeah. actually been very well maintained. It has a, a, a very nice exterior facade. And although, the, the it ha like I said, it had been used as a church, it had previously been used for other uses. So uh, while th there probably will be some changing up to the exterior, there's the addition of a canopy to overlook the lake area. It, it, it'll, it'll enhance what's already there, and it, it actually doesn't look terrible right now. So I think it's a really good adaptive reuse of the property. And, Thank and, you. It, and if I may inquire, will, there be, will this be solely for medical treatment? Will there also be research done there, or if you know? Uh, well, I, I can ask uh, Mr. Lawson to answer. I don't believe there'll be any research done there. It may, it may be a variety of medical uses. It may not be just one big mm -hmm. doctor's office. I think the intent is to make this almost what they're calling a pavilion, where there's a, a lot of different opportunities for care in one particular location. It, it, it should be a pretty interesting and novel concept in the area. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? No? All right. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this item? Seeing none, anything else from council? Close. Second. We have a motion to close with a second from Councilman Citro. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, item. If I could also, I'm sorry, if I can just say thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Who would like to read this, uh, this item? Councilman Vieira? Uh, why not, right? I move an ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 8702 Hunters Lake Drive in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly describing section one from zoning district classification, PDA, plan development, alternative place of religious assembly to PD, plan development, medical office, providing an effective date, and let me find. Oh. Here it is. Uh, I find that this is compliant with applicable land use policies as noted in Planning Commission staff report. This property located within the suburban mixed use six future land use category, which provides for residential uses, neighborhood commercial uses, residential office uses, general commercial uses, public uses, and special uses. Section 27-136, purpose of site plan control rezoning. Uh, the proposed rezoning meets the purpose and intent of a PD zoning district as it promotes the efficient use of land and infrastructure by establishing new medical office use on property that currently has a vacant building. The proposed configuration requires minimal waivers that should not adversely affect the surrounding neighborhood, which contains predominantly commercial uses. The proposed rezoning includes elevations that meet the new Tampa general, or strike that, new Tampa commercial overlay district requirements, and thus is compliant 
with the purpose and intent of the PD zoning district as it promotes architectural feature and elements which complement the surrounding community and enhance the overall quality of the development. Waiver criteria in section 27-139 subsection 4 based on the proposed use of a vacant building. I find that the requested waivers meet the purpose and intent of the PD zoning district and will not substantially interfere with the rights of others. The proposed development with waivers meet the purpose and intent of the PD zoning district. The waivers are in harmony with and serve the general intent of chapter 27 and a comprehensive plan. And Mr. Chairman, if I can, uh, to the maker of the motion, this also includes the revisions as outlined by staff in the revision sheet? Absolutely. Thank you. Second. Thank you very much. We had a uh, quick second before uh, from Councilman Dingfelder with the motion from Councilman Vieira. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carried with goods being absent. Second reading and adoption will be on July 16th at 9.30 a.m. And if, if I may, Mr. Chair, we have somebody here who I'm going to embarrass. Oh, look at Berg, that. My main man, my former legislative aide, a great guy. I love him to death, Chris Berg. I would hug him if I could. He's like, shut up, Lewis. All we need is Bob Buckhorn to show up and it's a party. <laughs> man. Chris is working in my office this summer as a, so a summer associate, and it's been super awesome to have him working with us. He's awesome. He's, he's the millennial Ron Weaver. <laughs> I didn't recognize you. I didn't recognize you in the mask. Yes, I saw on, uh, on Facebook you had checked in, moved back, or whatever, so glad, glad that you're back. Yeah, welcome back. Julia, you got, got to see you again, Chris. A good alumni association and uh, it's actually pretty cool because alumni also get to come back such as uh, Ms. Wells who I had the pleasure of working with and actually really old school I worked with Susan Johnson Velez many years ago at the county attorney's office. Just here, here. a big family. Big we, family. Look, we look forward to welcoming Chris as a lawyer in a couple of years. Pr I'm proud of you buddy. You know that. I'll see you soon. See you later. All right that concludes the agenda in this very long day. Uh, information reports and new business. Councilman Vieira. Absolutely nothing. Councilman Dinkfelder. Yes. Um, this morning we had item 32, which was had to do with the audit of the rental certificates program. And um, in that audit, it made reference to the fact that this particular department loses almost $200,000 a year. Um, and I was chatting with Mr. Bennett about it. Um, anyway. Bottom line is um, I would like a staff report from uh, staff and legal, um, I would say approximately 90 days, I don't know when that might be, Jim, um, to come back and talk to us about that program, what sort of efficiencies we might be able to make to improve that program, um, as well as possibly making it more self-sufficient financially. Would you like September 17th? Um, you know what, I'll, let's take it to October. Take it to October. October we have a regular meeting is October 15th. How about that? October 15th would be great. Um, I'd like a, a, instead of a written staff report, an in-person staff report um, and whatever time you deem appropriate, Mr. Chairman. All right. Well, we hope that by then things return to as they, as they were. Second. So we have a motion from Councilman Dingfeld or second from Councilman Carlson. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Anything else, sir? No, thank no. you. No. Councilman Carlson. My, my legislative aide said that, uh, remember we moved the FTOT uh, presentations from the CRA to the City Council. My, my legislative aide said that we, that we didn't officially make the motion yet. If, if we did. Do we need to make it at CRA or can we make it here? We, oh, we made the CRA easy. room, but I think we didn't make the. Well, I think if I, if I recall correctly, the CRA took it off their agenda and it was supposed to be set back to city council. It's supposed to be quarterly. Yeah, let me go ahead and make this motion. If it turns out it's redundant, then we can just um, deal with it later. I, make, I would like to make a motion to request FDOT, uh, Florida Department of Transportation, be scheduled for, reg for quarterly appearances to update city council on projects within the city of Tampa. Uh, with the first presentation being scheduled for September 17, 2020, the second presentation, uh, December 17, 2020. All right, we have a motion from Councilman Carlson. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Councilman Citra. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Anything else, sir? No, thank you. And, and if I may, uh, Mr. Chair, speaking of FDOT, I, I left MPO and Councilman Dinkfelder. I hope that you enjoy it as, as much as I have. Thank you. We're looking forward to next Tuesday's meeting, which will probably go on to who knows when. <laughs> so. All right.
Councilman Citro. Mr. Chair, nothing tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Councilman Miranda. Nothing, sir. May I have a motion to receive and follow all documents? Second. Motion from Councilman Miranda, second from Councilman Citro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.